What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Multiverse Monologues, the podcast show where we like to travel across the multiverses and fandoms that we love to talk about the movies and television shows that accompany those universes. Welcome back to the Star Wars Movie Marathon, where this week we have the absolute privilege to bring you our ranking, reviewing, and discussion of Star Wars, Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. In 2005, George Lucas would bring together his conclusion to not only the Star Wars saga, but the highly divisive prequel trilogy. And when it was released, it was met with just the the same amount of, of criticism, although I will say... Back in the day, this this was probably the most well-regarded prequel, and that's because it, it, there was a lot of hype leading into this because of one main reason, and that was Darth Vader. This was the turn, the fall of Anakin Skywalker and the rise of Darth Vader, and people were hyped to see this movie. As of 2024, this movie as well as the prequels themselves have re- have kind of had a huge resurgence we've talked about in the past but this one in particular it's not too uncommon to find revenge of the sith near the top of many people's lists in 2024 but is it one of the best star wars films is it truly i mean it's it's this is george lucas's last uh, f- attempt really diving into live action star wars filmmaking in Revenge of the Sith, and we're really excited to talk. I, I know I am very excited to talk about Revenge of the Sith. Um, it, it, this is this is prime Star Wars, and this is the end mm. of what a lot of people would call the Star Wars saga. Mm. And that, while that is not the case, um, we're definitely we're definitely hyped to talk about Revenge of the Sith. And I and I know another guy who's very excited to talk about Revenge of the Sith, and that is first and foremost, Mister. Ethan Westloff. Ethan, how are you? I'm doing great, guys. Uh, the prequel trilogy is coming to an end today wow. as a part of our Star <laughs> Wars marathon. It's no joke that maybe it hasn't been the most fun for me. This week was definitely fun getting the or Attack of the Clones episode uploaded and uh, just hearing all the feedback. We had a good amount of defenders for yes. both sides emerge this week, so it's nice to know divisive. that mm-hmm. right, even though it was divisive on the panel, it's also divisive outside of this podcast but no i'm excited to take this the end of this trilogy and hopefully going for another happy landing nice very very good another guy who is also very very excited to dive into this movie is mr micah hat micah how are you the attack on my life has left me (laughs) scarred and deformed but the podcast was ever stronger let's go let's go guys i uh i uh (laughs) Had a lot of research this week. Um, oh. I watched the entire twelve-hour brief analysis <laughs> so- of Phantom Menace, and I began that when, like, the day after we recorded our Phantom Menace did, podcast. Did wow. you do research, or did you watch someone else do the research and then kind of just give it to you? I let a a, a prophet of the of the Star Wars fandom <laughs> preach to me for twelve hours straight. And um, I have a greater appreciation of the force, what Lucas was trying to do here. Um, Emphasis on trying. Well, the the the, the expanded From. universe that he was prompting was very important here because prequel trilogy, the prequel era was uh, uncharted territory. It was off limits mm. for all extended universe. So with the closing of the uh, third movie, everything is now... Uh, allowed. You can write about any part of the Star Wars saga you want, and George Lucas won't be able to say, "Well, uh, actually, uh, because yeah, his movies are done." So, <laughs> and he long did, live the extended universe. Yeah. He did after this was released, as uh, he did have a very active involvement in, especially the first few seasons of the Clone Wars and the yes. and the Clone Wars film. But this was really his last, like, major involvement in a Star Wars production. I mean, and they poured. I mean, everything into this movie. I, I don't think I'm speaking like out of turn here when I say that like this, this is the best prequel for sure. How good it is, is definitely up for discussion is definitely on the table uh, for this podcast. But I, I think, I think you're right there. Like there was so much that was written about this, that the tie in video game and 2005 Lucasfilm or Lu- and LucasArts released three video games, Republic Commando, Revenge of the Sith and Battlefront two, all three of which are great video games. 
I mean, in 2005, it was a great time to be a Star Wars fan. What about Lego Star Wars? The uh, the f- first one. That, that, it that wasn't too. the original adventures. It was Lego Star Wars, the video game. Yeah. And uh, that actually, uh, they were making it before episode three came out. So some of the details are wrong in episode three. Like they have some deleted scenes that made it in, yeah. uh, such as the the vent scene as a transition from room to room. There's the uh, the clones, the clones that are disguised as Jedi at the temple. Yeah. Those never made it in the movie. A lot of cool things like that, that uh, for some reason didn't make it on the, there's a lot of cutting room floor stuff in episode yes. four, uh, episode three, four hours was the original cut guys. We missed out. Look how they massacred my boy. Oh. <laughs> what we could have had. We could have had an hour battle over Coruscant. Yeah. Yes. And some people may be happy that it's cut down to the length that it is, but I, more than anything, would love to see the four-hour cut that was this film. I mean, and you can see, if you dive into the special features, we're getting a little too technical right at the start here, but there's a lot of deleted scenes mm-hmm. that go into it, which are which are very, very interesting. But... Before we get into it, I want to say Ethan mentioned it like right at the start here, but Attack of the Clones had a, a really great discussion, and I'm even more interested to hear what you guys think of Revenge of the Sith and the prequels as a whole. So drop those comments down below. We'll all I know we'll be watching, we'll be responding. I I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say about that. So go to YouTube, click subscribe, click the like button, and uh, comment down below what you think of Revenge of the Sith. Is it your favorite? Is it you know misunderstood? Is it you know is the hype not really there for it in 2024? Let us know down in the comments below. But gentlemen, let's let's hit the hyperdrive and head over to the Star Wars galaxy. You ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Unlimited power! War. The Republic is crumbling under attacks by the ruthless Sith Lord Count Dooku. There are heroes on both sides. Evil is everywhere. In a stunning move, the fiendish droid leader, General Grievous, has swept into the Republic capital and kidnapped Chancellor Palpatine, leader of the Galactic Senate. As the Separatist droid army attempts to flee the besieged capital with their valuable hostage, two Jedi Knights lead a desperate mission to rescue the captive Chancellor. And that is your opening crawl for Star Wars Episode Uh, 3. It feels almost wrong not to just jump into the first scene now, guys. Oh, we... Oh, my Come on. What does that line mean? There are heroes on both sides? Like there's just strong people on both sides. Is that what that means? No, that oh. you gotta watch Clone Wars for that, man. Oh. You gotta watch Clone Wars for that. Have um, you seen anything? There's Micah? a yeah, there's a few. Attention to any Clone Wars? There was there's a few Clone Wars episodes. <laughs> Look at this. We haven't even gotten like ten minutes in this podcast before mentioning how Clone Wars enhances this movie. Um, the opening crawl it enhances. Yes, it yeah. does. Uh, there, the Senate of the Sep- the Separatists have a Senate as well um, on Raxus Prime and there you kind of get a sense that like wait a minute these people aren't bad they see the republic the way that it kind of is as like a corrupt state oh was that that episode where like padme has to go over to the with ahsoka yeah i remember though yep 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 yep. and then there was like the poison or something yes i will add that uh andor for me did a really good good job at that too making because you assume okay empire all evil but seen like the corruption seeps in in this movie like that's one of my favorite star wars yeah that's really cool when you can empathize with both sides Mm -hmm. that's what's so great and you can i mean definitely empathize with both sides on on this film because there's a man who toes the line but we do want to talk about he doesn't tow a line ben he he we'll jumps talk, we'll over that line we'll talk about it. and kills some younglings, we'll okay? There's it. no towing of any line. We'll talk about it. I just it. want to clear that Hey, out. maybe you could argue for him, all right? <laughs> we will talk about it. For sure. Argue why that's a good choice? Yeah, yeah. Hey! Okay. hey. All right. Killing... <laughs> <laughs> Defend killing younglings right now. Man. I will! <laughs> he no. was on the front line to killing Grogu, and he failed, all right? Oh, that youngling <laughs> should have known not to call him Master Skywalker. <laughs> I was not a master yet. Uh, it was the one trigger he needed. It's like, oh, um, that's it. That's why he killed He's, You've been talking to Mace. Anyway. <laughs> but no, Ethan is correct. Jumping into the first scene, like no other, I think this is the best intro that Star Wars has. In my in my opinion. Yeah. Like, is that up for debate? No. I don't, I don't know. I, this, I, I won't debate it. I, I think know. it's up there with like Rogue One. From what we've seen so far. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. There's so much to look at. I couldn't figure out what the... Well, that's, like, like that's this whole movie, man. Yeah, like this more than the other two and all, all the Star Wars films. Like 
in every shot, like there's something going on in the background. Mm. There's like a, a clone punching a droid in the background. If or you the, the droids uh, doing this for the Count Dooku or the uh, yes. uh, General Grievous yeah, yes. lightsaber and launch. Yeah, clones like getting destroyed on the ships on Kashyyyk. Like you spot Luminara on Dooley for a split second if you're not like noticing her. Like she's in a deleted scene. I didn't know that she was actually there. That's crazy. Luminar is in a deleted scene. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's an Order sixty six uh, animation. Yes, where she's there, but she it was gets cut. Killed. Yeah. Yes, there's a lot more Order sixty six, which we'll get to. But but let's but not yeah. get too off the rails. Yes. Do you want to hear what Ethan? A, thinks? Yes, yes. It is That's a- why we show up to hear what Ethan thinks. <laughs> yes, to hear what of Ethan course. Thinks. I want to hear what I, I want to hear, what hear both about of you. what. No, no, not, not what you think, but what John Wensloff thinks. Ooh. John- <laughs> Good question, Ethan. What, what my dad thinks. Yeah. How was your watch? How was it watching? Yeah, Avengers so I time? watched and Marcus. It, I watched it with my dad and my seven year old brother Marcus. Uh, we had to split this up. We had to watch this in two halves just because it wouldn't work in one night for us to watch it. We prioritized watching it together. But nice. we watched the first half. We ended right when it's revealed that uh, you know they find out the Jedi Council finds out that Sidious is. Isn't it crazy that that's in the middle? Like the that's like an hour mark. Dead yep. middle, yeah. middle of the movie. That's crazy. A Sith Lord? Yeah. But this this is a quote from my dad. Uh, he We paused it halfway through and he goes, wow, the first two movies make you forget that this one actually has a lot of good stuff in it. Mm. And I, I very much Whoa. agree with that. Because you... They set you up for failure, those first two. I don't like them. I know you guys. I, I like I like The Phantom Menace a lot more than I like Attack. But this one I really do think is really impressive in a lot of different ways. And I think in the context of how we watched this, I think it worked really, really well. Because I, I don't think I'd ever watched it this way. Because last time I watched it, shout out, I rented out a theater to watch it for Ben's bachelor party. Oh, that was the last time I watched it. And that was just I wasn't there. (laughs) Sorry, Micah. That that was that was isolated. Just that movie. So I judged that movie as its own thing. And I was like, yeah, that was that was all right. I wasn't too hot on it. But this time watching it and seeing it in the context of this prequel trilogy, but then in the context of the whole saga as a whole, I really grew a new appreciation for this movie. And I've always liked it growing up. This was I mean. It's not hard to say easily this is every kid's favorite Star Wars mm-hmm. movie. Even my brother Marcus was like, that that one's my favorite. There's just so much spectacle, so mm-hmm. much story, so much happening. It's hard for a kid to not say this one's your favorite. And then even growing up, it's easy. I'm looking at it now like, I totally see why this would be Ben's favorite. Totally. It's so easy to say that. It's just, is it mine? And I'm excited to talk about it in this podcast. But in the context of this this. Uh, watch through in the saga. I really appreciate this movie because it really puts an emphasis on on Palpatine mm. and who Palpatine mm-hmm. is and how Palpatine factored for literally everything. Palpatine is like the most perfect villain from a plan wise. The way he just is on both sides running the whole Clone Wars from behind the scenes and the way Order sixty six arises and the way the Empire it's like the first Galactic oh. em- like. He was there, but there's one thing he never factored in, and it was Padme having children. And I love how that seeps in, and it's those kids. It's a new hope, literally a new hope, that restores Anakin and restores the galaxy, really. So I I really liked this movie on this watch, and I'm excited to talk about it. This This one, more than any, more than the other two, especially, I would say, enhances... It, it does what a good prequel does and should do. It enhances what came before and it makes Return of the Jedi especially a much more mm-hmm. like emotionally charged experience because you have all of that. If you're just watching that- it like Return of the Jedi after the first two, right? You have you're on you're so much on Luke's side. You're the hero's journey and, and but then this time if you watch in the context of Revenge of the Sith then there's both sides. Mm-hmm. You see Anakin. That name no longer has any meaning for me. It's the right. name of your true self you've only forgotten. And this movie shows the turn, mm-hmm. in my opinion, like very ex- very well done. I yeah, think. and even stuff that I didn't like in the last one, like it played into this one really nicely, like the uh, Anakin's mom dying. What's her name? Shmi. Shmi. When Shmi dies, I it didn't really work for me in that movie. 
But in the context of this movie, it worked very well because he's lost his mom. He's having dreams about his mom. He lost her. And now he's having dreams about Padme, you know, his, his one true love, whatever. And he's thinking, I, I need to save her, even if that means like becoming a Sith. And maybe our, our understanding of Sith and Jedi are a little blurred, you know, maybe, maybe Palpatine has something to say. So I really, yeah, I really appreciated this movie. And for a long time, I really was like, this movie's good in the context of uh, being a finale to the Clone Wars show. Mm. That's how I viewed it for a long time. But I think it very much works as a finale to this this trilogy. Mr. Het, how, how was it watching Revenge of the Sith this time for you? So, a uh, little history. Grew up with Revenge of the Sith, you know, loved it just like every other kid on the planet that, that's a Star Wars fan. You know, everyone loves Revenge of the Sith. Ethan put it very nicely. Uh, I I owned the DVDs as a kid. I watched the heck out of them. Probably watched this the most out of the six. Um, definitely loved the, the Battle Over Coruscant scene growing up that was one of my favorite levels in the lego games yeah, such a good right? level yeah you, i mean it, you shoot the little targets and yeah the, the, it, the, there the was shield. no other level like it in any of the other star wars and i don't know why i don't know why they didn't include more levels like that but anyway brilliant score brilliant uh you know set design i, I love the cinematography everything just hit this time around and uh my the main part that i want to highlight is um the prequel trilogy was all building up to this. This works as not only a finale to a prequel trilogy, not only a finale to like to, to circle back to Anakin's story, but also it fills in every single thing you need to watch one through six and get a complete story. And that's something that, I mean, the bare minimum was reached and then he exceeded it. And, and, like you can't say that about every single about every single prequel trilogy. I mean, The Hobbit. A lot of people didn't like how Desolation of Smaug didn't quite reach the goal, or uh, Battle of Five Armies didn't quite reach the uh, the I don't know the idea that they wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. But Revenge of the Sith, you ended on the banger. Dude. Yeah, that that was the good one. And yeah. uh, and if Calvary, we had to end yeah. on the good one, that like imagine a world where. He decided to have episode two be Revenge of the Sith and then episode three be the Dark Ages or something. That could have been completely different. And the the pacing, the everything mm. could have been so different. But he chose to have the Dark Ages start in the middle of the movie, which was such an amazing decision to me. I love that. And uh, I just so passionate about this movie I, and i don't know if i have the words but i will try i i know what ben's got the yeah, words you so. will try I, you will try i am i largely in the same boat as you micah because i there's just so much yeah, to say there is uh i love how obi-wan gets to connect with padme there's hints of uh possible like s sateen oh 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 Ooh, There's hints of like ben, ben thought you were hinting at uh no, Palpatine Obi -Wan and, and Obi-Wan no, getting, no. getting it on. There's hints of Padme's <laughs> like, we should talk to Obi-Wan because mm. he has some understanding. Is that hinting towards Sabine or S Satine? Satine or Sabine? Uh, Satine, Sabine right? is, Satine. 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 Okay. is a different okay. character. Right? Okay, like different character. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I had to look it up before just to make sure. So And you still mess and up. And I still <laughs> hesitated. <laughs> hey, hey, off one letter. So yeah, I, I love those, those little uh, you know. Clone Wars enhances this experience. And Without those I feel that the Clone Wars enhanced my episode three experience more than it did my episode two experience because of uh knowing that they've already had all their experience with the clones by this point. They've already had all of their you know, the Clone Wars has already happened. We've seen it all. And now we get the culmination of everything, the big grand finale, grand hurrah. I, I wanna watch the uh the fulcrum cut. Which has the uh, the final episodes of Clone Wars season fine and uh, fine. and and it, it merges it all together chronologically. All I'd right, love to see have, that. Let's yeah, wrap they, this up so we can watch the full right. cut, guys. They have they have Bad Batch scenes mixed in with actually some of the Clone Wars animated yes. show from two thousand three. Yes, the attack on Coruscant is shown in that show. It's super it's, cool stuff. I, I've always I, wanted to do that too. I think episode three is the most Star Wars we get, like the most Star Wars-y movie that we get out of all six that we've seen. Mm. 
from the original six. And I, I will fight that to my grave. So you, you've, Micah, you su- very surprisingly, where, I might say. Yeah, where episode four gives you the magic and introduces you to the universe of Star Wars, episode three masters it. It, uh, it manipulates it like like Palpatine does and transforms it into this uh, prompt for the extended universe to take with and run to set up the events between episode three and four, Clone Wars, everything. And Star Wars would not be the same without the prequel trilogy. Mm-mm. No, I and I agree. And you, you've you become like very surprisingly very like I even I didn't expect this. Like you were extremely positive on this prequel trilogy. Like you would say that I've always been kind of a, an, a prequel apologist. Uh, I've always tried to look for the I mean, just Star Wars apologists. I've always tried to look for the good in the Star Wars movies because I, I just accept this is what we're going to get. Yeah. Uh, let's see how we can make it fit in lore. And I've 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 uh, I don't know. I just kind of accept it's, well, I like I'm with you. Like it's Star yeah. Wars. Like I want to like Star Wars. Yeah. I go into every Star Wars project wanting to like it. I even the Rise of Skywalker. I went into. I'm like, okay, all right, just dud last time. But let's I, come on, let's do I it. Mean, JJ, my uh, like, my the Last Jedi ranking is is uh, is everything here. <laughs> it is. It is. So, but I'm excited to see where this shakes out for yes. you. Yeah, and and you're and you're right, man. The, like the Clone Wars, which is my personal favorite show. Because I grew up with it as a kid, the nostalgia has a heavy factor in that. But I think there's some truly phenomenal television within that show itself. And because of that, like, it makes this movie, like, (laughs) it makes it one of the greatest experiences this guy has in his life. Oh, every time I every time Ooh. I watch Revenge of the Sith, you're I'm, here first, Ben. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> this kidding. This is the you, greatest dude. experience he's had in his life. I said one of. I well, said one, one of, of the greatest of. experiences. Sorry, Sam. Your marriage means nothing. <laughs> but because of because of all that builds to this movie, all he has to do is put on episode three, and <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I need, <laughs> dude. The I, there, but you're right. It is. It is the most Star Wars you can Star Wars. Like George Lucas went out with an absolute bang with this one. Like, Written and directed by George Lucas himself. I there mean, you that, go. And there, he has a cameo. He does have a cameo. Baron Peponoido. No way. I had to go back and look for it. I was like, oh, that's probably him. And then I looked it up. Oh, yeah, that's him. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably him. Yes. So there, there's no surprise that for me, this is like, not only we've reviewed a lot of movies on this and we've talked yes. about a lot of stuff on this podcast but we have never ranked and reviewed one of my like top 10 favorite movies ever and this is one of like Endgame when it the hit the top 10 I actually do think Endgame hit top 10 for me I gotta I gotta take a look at my I just updated it recently was that your number one for the Marvel watch through I it was yes okay it was my number one but this this one is like in my top five of all time mm-hmm. I have I have an extreme amount of love for this I will say I don't I, I do have like certain things that I would rather not be the same about this movie, but my love for it is right. Like I look past it. Tr- it it trumps that. Yeah. yeah. And like this time around, like I'm watching it with Sam and it doesn't hit different. Like I'm not at a point where it hits different yet for me because I've seen it so many times in recent, like we watched it, we rented out the theater. I'll never thank you enough for that experience. That was so epic, but we we had such a good time watching this this week, and man, I'm telling you, right? <laughs> you pull up Sam Sam's uh, Sam's one point was uh, that Palpatine's butt chin transfers to his forehead. All right, <laughs> Great, valid point. But five out of five. Yes, but. to to <laughs> indeed to bring it around. Like I I am a like a a D one Glazer of Revenge of the Sith. So I'm going to, I'm going to try and temper it. <laughs> I'm going to try and temper that, but <laughs> um, uh, I'm not going to look that up. You already did, Mike. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to go into Don't lie that. to us. We're looking <laughs> at the screen. <laughs> I, I just have a lot of good things to say about Revenge of the Sith, but uh, we know, Ben, I don't think we know that word means what you think. But about. yes. Yeah. Um, ben, did you grow up with this movie? No, actually, I didn't. I didn't. didn't I never yeah. watched this movie as a kid. No, I I threw this on any chance I could get. My <laughs> grandparents owned a VHS of of Revenge of the Sith, 
No, mm. it wasn't a VHS. It was a DVD, not a. D- it was a DVD because the VHS, VHS was not released in America. I'm thinking of the earlier ones, but I would throw on the DVD at their house because they owned Revenge. Of- they didn't own any of the other ones, but Revenge of the Sith. So I threw it on any chance well, I if was. You got on one of them. Got on one of them. That's right. And but it, yeah. it's interesting because I would put a new hope. At, you know how we 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 suggested. Uh, all right, what well, if is would you put this in the national? archives for film right a new hope would be in there for me but revenge of the sith wouldn't but i prefer like for me i I would prefer revenge of the sith just as a as as a film but for the archive because that i mean for me you talk different parameters yeah 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 you know like if you're gonna watch one, if if you're gonna show someone one, if they can only watch right. one Star like the, Wars the movie, the same, yeah. if someone could only watch one Marvel movie, it it wouldn't be Endgame. Yeah, right. you can't now start with that. On. You'd have yeah. to do like Iron Man or something. Right? Yeah, something that gets you, you know, dips your toes into the world, and mm-hmm. then maybe you'll but like it. But it's still good on its own. Yeah, and that that's a a question though. Is, is this good on its own? Because it does have a a new hope as quality Great to it. Because you jump into it. And it is this whole brand new world. Like it's right after the Clone Wars, mm-hmm. or I mean, whatever the end of the Clone what's Wars, the time really. Skip? But what's uh, the time yeah, time? what's the time span, Ben, between Attack and Revenge? Three and a half years. Three and a half years. Years. So three yeah. and a half years of Clone Wars we had, and we're jumping into this battle right here, and you're meeting new, like General Grievous. Who the heck is this guy? He's he's a brand new character, and he's got all this interesting lore surrounding him. And if you don't know Clone Wars, you don't know who this guy is. Which I think could be a critique of this movie, but also like you don't know who Darth Vader is when you enter A New Hope, so maybe it works in that way. I mean, Grievous is such—I'll just say this now—such a cool character yep. design. Like even to this day, I'm just that guy is cool. That is a cool well, droid. He's such a cool character that in the uh, what's his name, Gendi Tar- Tartakovsky, Tart- yeah. yeah. In his animated Clone Wars uh, shorts, he made General Grievous super OP. Yep. And uh, he's just killing Jedi left and right. I mean, that, that's his whole thing, right? Is he has his collection and he has all these lightsabers. Well, he got him from killing Jedi. But you don't see that kind of just overpowered Jedi killer Grievous in Revenge of the Sith because you just don't have time for it. And it's he's leaving it up for Extended Universe. And that's kind of one of the good things about Revenge of the Sith is that it prompts so many things for Clone Wars, yes. for uh, for books and and lore and it's everything. So, yeah, th- this movie, like in the context of the Clone Wars, if you've seen that show, this movie just highlights like how our Jedi are just bosses. Like Obi Wan comes in, it just kills Grievous, dude. This is such Anakin a great comes action. in and he just kills Dooku. Like all these big bads that we have and. Just they're they're done. This is what lightsabers always should have been. I feel uh, like oh, not not like oh, I mean they had to have their their growth right, but uh, lightsabers in my mind will always be how they are portrayed in Episode Three. Yeah. How about that? Yep. So they are always uh, just using lightsabers left and right, dismembering people, dismembering droids, and they they carry that into the Clone Wars show too, and it, it's great. It's no exten- complaints yeah, of, yeah. The, of the sword fighting in this. It's an extension of amazing. yourself. Yes. Like, oh, that's what a lightsaber is, and it, like, it's all over. I love all the movie. blocks where they go behind their head to block on the right side. So good. I, I Delicious. <laughs> yes. We, we have four Star Wars lightsaber duels to rank this time around, and I mean, who? I can't wait to do that because I can't wait to see where they're going to fall. little tease for later in the show, guys. Keep listening. Yeah, lightsaber. We have a whole ranking of lightsaber duels so far. And some of these might reach the top, but yes, you are correct. They're the lightsabers in this movie are some of the best, if not the best in the entire saga Mm -hmm. saga. I I think I've been working on saying that right after Sega, Sega, the Sega, Ben, the Sonic Sega, it's Sega saga. I got to say it right. I'm getting, I'm going to get it right from now on. It's like Mario, but you say that stuff about the expanded universe and, and your, your question that was prompted to us is this good by itself? And my, my, yeah, go ahead. Like we will never be able to truly answer that question because we have so much Star Wars under our belt. Mm-hmm. Like you'd have to show this to. I feel like it is though. Like you can get some enjoyment out of this. It, it's kind of the same thing with Infinity War. Like you can jump into Infinity War and kind of get an idea of what's going on, and by the end, you're like, okay, I, I, I get this, and and it's leading up. It, it's got this 
uh, grievous ending. How about that? Uh, it, it, it's a cliffhanger. Like, Oh, what happens next? All the Jedi are dead. You know, all the Avengers are dead. What happens after that? And then you lead into the original trilogy. So I guess you can have Revenge of the Sith as the onboard. You could probably skip one and two and still be fine going. I mean, yeah, four came out on its own. So yeah, you can continue the series from episode three on its own. If you only consumed episode three, I think you would still have a great time. But you because would also, of the action. But you would also be frustrated more so with Anakin. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it, this movie depends on how you view Anakin and what he does throughout this movie. And I think you you would be frustrated if you hadn't seen one and two. Mm-hmm. Because to understand where he's coming from, you have to have had that prior knowledge. You don't need the Clone Wars, although it enhances Anakin's, without a doubt. But his mom dies. He's essentially been a slave his entire life even Mm. with the jedi and they're this monastic order with rules and rigidity and anakin is not about that at all it's clearly evident throughout this whole trilogy he's not you know rigid and all about rules like that's not his way at, at all and because of that and because of the growing division between him and the council it's pushed farther and farther and farther and a lot of what Anakin does, even though it is absolutely wrong, you see where he's coming from. Mm-hmm. I absolutely see where Anakin goes. And I think the way George Lucas does it is perfect. It's it's perfect. I am not kidding you guys when I have to say, this is where this D1 glazing kind of comes into play here. <laughs> you I am not kidding you. You don't have to say. use that word, that term, Ben. Anakin Skywalker... Slash Darth Vader, mm-hmm. and a lot of it is due to this movie, is the best written character in all of fiction. All of fiction. And I will fight you on You'll that. You'll fight me on that. Absolutely. You, you're counting in the, the dialogue from the past two movies? His story his sto- his is over- what I'm talking about. You're not talking yeah. about the individual like units. You're talking about the overall his story. story and arc. and The okay. story all beats right. of Anakin right. and Vader going... because. You you look at Anakin's life, and he I said it before, but he's been a slave his whole life. He will never not be a slave until he is set free in those final moments by Luke. A slave to Watto, a slave to the Jedi, and now a slave to the Emperor. Mm-hmm. A slave to both sides of the Force. He, he plays both sides, and all of this comes to a head in this movie. And I really, even though there are some rough parts, and even I will admit in Attack of the Clones that Hayden has some rough dialogue... In this, I think it's much improved. Not only the dialogue, but his acting. I, I have almost zero complaints. You want to know why? Yeah, him, him and uh, oh yeah, go for you it. You want to know why? You want to know why that story works why? so well? Anakin is a slave his entire life. It's Luke when he gets his redemption. He's free, guys. Why does that work so well, guys? Did you notice the? Because it, it, it's an analogy for sin. We're all a slave to sin, guys. Exactly. We need the Son, the one and only Son, to save us from our sin. The chosen one? Again. The chosen one to save us from our sin, Lucas set out to create this modern interpretation, or as for Star Wars, of modern myths and and tales from of old. Like, a lot. Mm. I mean, it's no secret. A, a, A son born of a virgin birth? How on the nose can you get about this? But... This is where it differs because I mean Jesus does not <laughs> kill turn the, the dark side. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it, I I learned of the theory this week that uh, Darth Plagueis or uh, Palpatine, she, she, Sheev, Sheev, our boy, used the Force to uh, oh! <laughs> to impregnate Sheev. <clears throat> so Anakin is born of the dark side, not of the because he says in his Darth Plagueis, Plagueis story, Plagueis, Plagueis. Plagueis, I always said Plagueis, but he says in the dark Darth Plagueis story that uh, you know he uses the the Force to create life, mm-hmm. and he looks at Anakin with that look, and he's like, "You getting what I'm saying?" And then Anakin's like, "Whoosh! You mean I could save Padme?" <laughs> and it also kind of, and I, I I am naturally blinded by love. At the end of the day, I'm kind of against this theory, but. It makes sense because why the heck would Palpatine take an interest in nine-year-old Anakin right mm-hmm. from the start So, if it wasn't already there? Does George Lucas have an official stance on this 
theory? Uh, it's that Jar Jar is the key to it all. <laughs> Jar Jar is the key to all of it. <laughs> no, he does not. He does. He does. Jar Jar used the dark side of and the forest. <laughs> so there's actually a, a Vader comic where they actually have a panel of him, Palpatine manipulating Shmi and creating Anakin. Yeah. But the artist and writer of that comic has said uh, there there is no official Lucasfilm is not taking a position on this. Lucas never did. We, I'm not saying that this is what happened, and mm-hmm. so it's never it's never truly answered. And I kind of like it that it's not. I, I like the fact that Anakin, because the dark side was growing so strong, they needed they needed the balance. It was it was just the force. The force had to it. produce. I don't know the chosen. One. What do you think, Micah? Do you like it better that the force produces Anakin or that that it's been this grand plan? I like it unanswered. Yeah, okay. I like it uh, until there is a sufficient like. Official. This is the story. I'm gonna say but anything can go until then. Even and, still, creators like come out and say things, but once once you give it to the fans, it's the fans. Yeah. We we can kind of control the narrative and like yeah, they can come out and officially take a stance. George Lucas can take a stance, but you're never gonna change fans' own interpretation. Yeah, and I I love um I love uh just how George Lucas doesn't really care about the lore anymore. Did did. I watched this interview this week where uh, Jan Stewart was interviewing George Lucas, and he was like, "So we've had a lot of answers in Star Wars over over the last, you know, many years that it's been out. But one character that we don't have much of a backstory on is what's Obi Wan's home planet?" And George Lucas <laughs> is like, "Oh yeah, that was one of the that was one of the first things I ri- wrote in the very first script." And and he's like, "Oh really, really?" And um, and he says to to Jon Stewart, he's like. Yeah, his his home planet is the uh, the planet of Stew John. <laughs> he just St- made it, he made it up on the spot. You're and, right. It's like Stygian. Or, did he say Stu? He John? said Stu John Stu because John. his name is John Stewart. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, but you know, to, to go back to uh, Hayden Christensen's acting in this, I I want to acknowledge that also Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen, mm. the cadence of their speaking is a lot more similar to how Darth Vader speaks and how Alec Guinness speaks. Mm-hmm. Because uh, uh, Ewan McGregor had the, uh, he requested a tape of of all the Alec Guinness uh, uh, clips yeah. together just on a loop. Dialogue. And he just studied it. And he studied the, and his voice sounds so different from one and two. He sounds like a more, you know, Jedi master. He sounds, uh, and, uh, yeah. know, he, he sounds like him. We and like same thing with Hayden. Yeah. He sounds kind of like uh, the cadence of I love you highlight Hayden just because like I was talking about in the last movie I really didn't like him in Attack I I, I liked him in this movie quite a mm-hmm. bit I like Hayden Christensen and you know just I don't know it it was funny in there we're not going to jump into the final duel yet but in the final duel Marcus Marcus my seven year old brother goes look he's wearing white and he's wearing black <gasps> like, oh, color theory look color. at that <laughs> see like it's that but that's why, Show Land part books. of the greatest thing I love, like <laughs> that's why it's so good, because even a seven year old, like it's that mm-hmm. obvious, like it's that clear. Even though they have the same color lightsabers mm-hmm. yeah. and they've been the heroes both times, nope. And it's even foreshadowed throughout this whole movie. And I mean, the prequel trilogy in and of itself, Anakin's wearing darker robes. And maybe at- that's why it makes it such a good movie, is because I- I've said it a bunch in the Marvel movie marathon, where uh, the best scenes are when the heroes are up against each other. When these characters that you know and love are pitted against each other, fight to the death, because who doesn't love to see that? And this is the ultimate tale of that. You have five movies that are just building up to this third movie in a franchise. Isn't that like, how do you write a story that that has that hole in the middle that is still so good once it's filled? Like, it's amazing. I, 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 we talked about it in The Avengers when Iron Man is up against. Thor and Captain America and they're all fighting each other and it's cool. I it it's just it's just cool. Not that he's comparing the weight of that to the no, weight no, no, of no, no. this. This is but just the leads you, you, Yeah, it's interesting to see and I just I love the character looks in this oh, movie. Yeah. I think everything looks good. We talked about Ewan and I, he's the best looking he's looked, you know, in the hundred percent man. Same with Hayden, the man. hair and the, the black robes. It's Workout Brandon Stoneberg row. said that the first hour and a half, Hayden Christians, this is the best Anakin that we ever get. I don't know why he specified the first half, but uh well, I think he's you pretty get, cool. You get Darth out. you get Darth Vader killing <laughs> yeah. younglings. Well, right. It's half. not Anakin Skywalker not anymore. A, someone I'm gonna, you know, defend. Exactly. Which uh do you want to bring up any points about uh 
Uh, do you have any any changed thoughts on Force Ghost Anakin on the end of six? So I think with so if, for those of you listening, I uh, don't like the change that they did with uh, making Hayden Christensen that Force Ghost. But I think in the context of the Ahsoka series, hmm. that it works more there because you have young Hayden interacting with Ahsoka in there and. I just for that that movie it doesn't work and I still cuz even even still in the Ahsoka show he's a little older you know admit, it would not that force ghost age whatever but it just that's not when he died so it's still it's interesting I'm not, I'm not going to fight I'm not going to die on any hill when it comes to force ghost Anakin I would almost say he shouldn't have a force ghost at all based on what they say in this movie That uh, is true so, so at the end of, of episode 3 uh, Yoda is like, I have training for you, Obi Wan. While you're on Tatooine, and he's like, training? What do you mean? And then Obi uh, Yoda's like, I have been talking with Qui Gon Force Ghost. He said that he learned how to do the Force Ghost stuff before he died, so now he can appear as a Force Ghost. And uh, I'm gonna teach you how to do this while you're on Tatooine. That means that it's a learned skill before you die. And uh, and is it only a light side skill? Sith can- cannot transfer. They 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 are. Essence so can be there, but only it, Jedi can live on. If so you strike then, me down, I'll become where, more powerful. Yeah. Where does Anakin learn this ability? What in the in the grand lore of Star Wars? Why is he a Force Ghost? The Chosen One, because he's highest the Chosen One. Glorian count. He's, could it be that, or could it be the rules he, don't he apply do to him? Or could Basically, it be uh, yes. that Luke was strong enough to commune with him? Not Anakin was strong enough to appear. Just Luke was strong. enough. I guess we were talking about that, how uh, how ghost Obi-Wan looks clearer in episode five and six compared to four or no, no, uh, he's not a he's not a ghost at all. in four, he's just like a voice five. He's kind of fuzzy six. He's very clear. Mm. So I, it, I think that can. Is it an emotional relationship connection where because because who, who who's seen Forrest Ghost Anakin, Luke and Ahsoka? Is that right? Is are those only two? Did Ray see? Wait, and then Leia also appears as a Force ghost, doesn't she? Leia does, yep. You might be huh. onto something, man. I don't know. You like, might be onto something. It feels like, because I like what Micah said, it's more reaching out to them as it is reaching them reaching out to us. Well, I kind of... Like, I mean, it's both ways. But it, I, that actually... Ooh, it makes The Rise of Skywalker better, actually. Ooh! Hey, any credits the, for those movies? I know, uh, it's true. <laughs> it's true, but Han appearing to uh, Kylo Ren, to Ben. Like that, that scene actually makes more sense if you look at it that way. Because it, it, Han wouldn't be strong with the Force, wouldn't he? Because isn't but his because of the connection. Count low? But what about who? Who knows what Han's me- metachlorian yeah. count was? We never checked. I know guys. there's a canon count Ooh. for it. But uh, one other thing I want to add is that there was that Qui Gon uh, Yoda communication in a deleted scene. Liam Neeson actually recorded voiceover for it. Yes, didn't make it into the deleted scene. The deleted scene didn't make it in the movie. So it's just. <laughs> Qui Gon kind of just does, disappeared. The dialogue does appear in the book, which, if you are oh! a fan of this movie, I will say that this book greatly enhances. For Revenge audio listeners, Sith. what is the book, Ben? The it's a Revenge collection of, of pages uh, that <laughs> tell the no, story. No, no, no. Like, if someone were to, if someone's just listening to the audio and they want to buy this book, what would they go buy? Revenge of the Sith. The book. The Wait, book. What? It's just called Revenge of the Sith. The book. Yeah. Well, it's it's the novelization of Revenge there we of the go. Sith. Like, That's what I was there. It's it's the child it, no- novelization. It actually, <laughs> I'm telling I'm telling you, like with a button that reads the lines to you. <laughs> as <laughs> as tragic as his fall is in this movie, it's more tragic in the book because they add more to why, like the whole like his, him becoming a master here and being denied the rank of master is like it's kind of like okay, you're way too upset. But in the freaking book, it's <laughs> like I'm not kidding. Like this is this is way too nerdy. But in the book, give, being given the rank of master is a way to unlock the holocron vault. Only masters can go in the holocron vault. And in that, through that, Anakin's like, okay, my first thought isn't just to go to Palpatine and the Sith for help with Padme. I'm going to explore all my options first. But only being a master can ben. get me into the holocron vault. Lore Master Ben, guys, we're we're gonna dumb this down a little. Holocron vault. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're what right. This? You're right. I'm getting carried away. Basically, it's this vault 
of knowledge that the Jedi carry and a lot of like there's forbidden techniques and forbidden it's knowledge. It's like a hard drive? Basically, yes. And in here, Anakin's like, well, maybe there's a way that I can save Padme. I know I know Jedi have existed for thousands of years. Maybe there's a way. But because of that, Jocasta knew the librarian from the second film said, well, you're actually not allowed in there yet. And so he gets Chomp. kind of frustrated. And then because Palpatine knows this, he says, you know what? I'm appointing you as my official representative on the Jedi Council. And he's like, oh my gosh, my way's here. This mm. is it. And then he's denied the rank. And then it's like, how can you do this? Then then it all makes sense. His reaction to that is, how can you be on the council and not be a master? It's not just because he wants the rank. It's not just because he wants that credibility. It's because through that, there could be a way to save Padme. But it's just there's not enough time. In the, that, that was in the four-hour cut. Probably. And you know movies. what makes it even stronger? Uh, so y he wanted to be a master so bad, right? You know how close he was to being a master? One of the uh, the ways to skip the <laughs> master training is to kill a Sith. That's how Obi Wan did it. That's how Luke does it in in uh, in the original trilogy. If he struck down Palpatine in that room, if he wanted to be a master, he could have. And that was probably going through his head at that time. That's why he had his blade out. But what about he it? Wasn't he killed Dooku? It, it well. What do you mean? Like that didn't give him the rank of master, killing Count Dooku. Oh, you know what? So because That's like weird. it's not just killing it's not just killing Sith that gets you the rank of master. I mean, you gotta you gotta realize here, Anakin is twenty two and he is very headstrong. And the council knows this. The only reason they grant him even a seat on the council is because Palpatine demands mm -hmm. it. They're not gonna give him the rank of master, but in in the in the freaking book, there's also a, a line that Mace Windu is like, you know what? If what you say is true, you will have gained my trust. He says mm -hmm. that in the movie. And through this, like he was going to promote Anakin because yep. of like this information, because he does, he's totally earnest about it. That turn, he's like, I'm quickly going to discover the truth about all this. Yeah, I like and that. And runs scene. to the Jedi. Yeah. Like, but, and <laughs> that scene is so good too, because Palpatine right there lays all his cards out on the table. Like, mm. no, yeah, you know what? And I you can see said. it in his face, like, what? I finally told somebody. No, no, Palpatine's yeah, saying, yeah. I finally told somebody, my truth is out. How was he going to take it? Yep. Because, and, and Man, that's so good. And then uh, Mace Windu's confrontation with, uh, by the order of the Jedi Council, you are under arrest. <laughs> Guys, like, Mace Windu's a real villain of this movie. He really okay? is, man. But what a dummy. Like, he, he, he finds out. A Sith Lord. Sith Lord. <laughs> He's the one we've been looking for. And instead of assembling an elite team of Sith killing Jedi, he finds the three chumpiest chumps. Well, hold on, hold on, that hold he on. Can. <laughs> there's there's a lore reason why they're killed almost immediately, because why didn't they sense that he was a Sith so, already? If he's this strong with the Force, it's the same explanation as to why no, they couldn't. But, no, no, it's right, the same uh, explanation as to why they couldn't find uh, Yoda in Dagobah, because he's surrounded by a very Force uh, like dense area. So Palpatine is surrounded by a lot of Force. The, the dark side is very strong right. in, in Palpatine. They couldn't... They're, they're not trained to fight Sith. They're not trained to... Uh, so they're expecting to be able to see what Palpatine's moves are. But because he's a Sith, his yeah. moves are not the same what they would have thought. So okay. that's why they're they're just like... Sure. They're in shock. Sure. They're, they're, okay, they're in shock. because They're in it, shock because they can't see Palpatine's moves right. before well, they happen. Well, we'd all be shocked if we saw old man... <laughs> Palpatine yeah. do that. <laughs> like yes. but, but that that's technically the lore reason right. why. All right. <laughs> but I think the way that it's shot could have been better because we have uh, who are the three you have Kit Fisto there. Egan Take Kohler up. and Sassy Tin are the other two. Okay. Yeah. So the first two, just right away. Chumps. What chumps. are we doing? They're yep. chumps. Kit Fisto leaves, you know, he gets a few, you know, sword action <laughs> in there before taking I it think to the to gut. show how powerful they are. Because aren't they all masters too? Not all of them are. Not all of them are. <laughs> uh, no, actually, no. I think they all are on the council at this point. So, except for Fisto, yeah. It's not like they're chumps. It, I think showing that they're chumped so bad is more evidence towards Palpatine's but strength. I'll, I'll say this: in the context of this movie, we have not seen those three do. We haven't seen Mace really do anything other than kill Jango Fett. You we saw haven't... Kit Fisto in episode two. Go <laughs> right, right. Give a big smile. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we haven't really seen them do anything, so it's just. 
I think the the scene was just Same edited C-3PO. and shot. It was a little <laughs> so, weird, just because. Yes, ha, I'll admit that. Yeah, you're right. They just sure your lore reason makes sense, but it it isn't displayed well on screen because no. there are a few scenes in this movie where something could have happened in the background that doesn't, just because the scene needs to play out. Because like there are a lot of instances where droids could have shot at someone or clone troopers could have shot at someone and they kind of didn't in this movie just to let the scene play out so that are you speaking to the fact that when obi-wan jumps down in front of and surrounded by all those droids <laughs> being one of those scenes well i think that's part of like general grievous is like i got this <laughs> oh 100 percent. it's grievous yeah. but pride, that is but, some yeah. like real confidence in obi-wan kenobi there because <laughs> yeah. there are a ton of just droids He's lucky that Grievous wanted to take it into his own hands. But I'm, I think... All four of them. Sp- yeah, specifically <laughs> in the scene where uh, they they fir- they capture uh, Anakin. He's like, we're smarter than this. Right after that, they capture them. They're in the, the command center of the ship. And uh, they, they're able to force the lightsabers from Grievous. And then there's just so many droids in there who just aren't shooting them. Mm. It's like, okay, mm. this is... I wonder if Grievous has some sort of remote control over all of them at the same time. And so he doesn't that, want them dead? I feel like that... I, or I guess would cannon. Grievous have known that's about... could also make the argument that maybe they didn't want to misfire and shoot the glass. And he that. also didn't command them to, to... Everything that the droids do in that command center are because Grievous tells them to do it. So if they are under the instructions of don't do anything until I say so, right? That would make sense. They just have bad, bad droid instincts. Yeah, they're not but soldiers. What a, like that's a little nitpick because mm-hmm. you can do the same thing with the stormtroopers and. I'm really well, glad they cut the, out a sequel, lot of those deleted scenes the for the the Invisible Hand. Uh, some There's, of those are like when An- when Anakin speaks droid the and he's like, "Oopsie, <laughs> oopsie." <laughs> Did you see the other one where uh, they're they're surrounded by droids in the hall? That's supposed to be the first Grievous introduction with and Shock T. Yeah, yeah. So Shock T is just killed by Grievous for some reason. How and many then, deaths does she have off screen, Ben? Shock off screen, T. yeah. Like what? What do you mean? Because there's like another deaths. there's another deleted scene where she dies at the temple. Anakin kills her. And it's funny they even used the the they give her a <laughs> the few... invisible hand so, shot yeah. for it. There's like four. And technically right now in canon, she does not have a canon death. But for the longest time until Disney made it not canon, in the Force Unleashed games, mm. that was her death. Galen Merrick, okay. killed, Starkiller, kills her. Because she game. does. She, you see her die in the Lego Star Wars game. Mm. She's on that little uh, hologram. Yep. Mm-hmm. Anakin kills her, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but... Uh, be- that's one another one of those deleted scene things. Her death is all over the place in canon. But, like, that's part of the... like. We, you talk about how much, like, just questions it begs, like things you want to see, like Obi-Wan in the council briefing talking about the Outer Rim sieges. And just there's so much to this movie you just get hints at. Like or, the Order 66 sequence, you're placed on four planets for a split second and all these clone troopers who are really cool, who have awesome backstories, same thing with the Jedi on those planets, just for a second you're there and they gun them down. And it's like, oh my gosh, I want to know what happens on this planet, on Felucia, on Seleucami. On the, like, there's so much in this movie that's just left to the imagination. And like, it's the perfect thing to like build off of, basically. And that's why there's been in every, almost every aspect of Star Wars has like, there's an Order 66 sequence in a lot of Star Wars media now. It's because it's one of, one of, if not the greatest sequences in all of Star Wars, like, Order 66 in and of itself is like such a good scene. Like execute Order 66. Imagine hearing that for the first time. Yeah. And of course, the Clone Wars makes it uh, an emotional and experience. That, that sh- oh, uh, Canon Shakti does die uh, at Order 66. I just looked it up, unfortunately. But that's not like... There's no media that confirms it. They just say that, you know? Mm. At least... Yeah, um, unless I unless I'm missing something. Come on, no order sixty six is archives incomplete. Sure, could be very so, uh, so good. Like because so. you know so so good. <laughs> Something's gonna wipe out the Jedi. And in the episode Shattered, there is a vision that Yoda has where Shakti is killed with a lightsaber in Clone Wars. Yes, the episode called Shattered. I don't know. I don't remember ben, that. I'll have wrecked. to rewatch it. 
I guess the I'm lore wrong. master has been lore lord. No, not lord. lord. I don't know. I didn't have a clever plan. Season word, seven, so. episode okay. eleven. Ethan, you were saying about Order sixty six. Yeah, sorry, that's great. Like such a good sequence and such a sad oh, sequence, man. and the just you see all like because yes, the context of the Clone Wars is these are these are the gangs, right? Y'all been fighting battles forever for so long, and then they your buddies just turn on you. Execute Order sixty six, and they just start murking all the Jedi, but. I've I've always said this. My favorite period of Star Wars is the reign of the Empire, is the dark times. And we get the start of that in this movie. And you really feel that depression where it's it's just Obi-Wan and Yoda at the end of this. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there, we know from expanded lore and stuff that other Jedi survive. Co-coasters. But in the context of this movie, it's just those two. You don't feel it, right? No, you and feel you're the hopelessness in this. You feel there is no hope, mm -hmm. especially with one of uh, probably Padme's best scene in the movie when everyone's cheering for Palpatine, and she says, "So this is how liberty dies with, with thunderous, thunderous applause." applause. Mm -hmm. Like that is a great line for the whole. The, that's exactly what George Lucas set out to do here. And the po the politics are the the best in this movie. Mm -hmm. Yes. They They're are, very clear. Yeah. It's a, exactly what you need from this. And it, he set out to make this. The Senate will decide it. your fate. I am the Senate. Because yeah. he literally has I control over the everything. Senate. And, and it's, it's cool because if you weren't thinking about it super hard until that point, you're like, oh, he definitely, like, episode one and two, the, the breadcrumbs were there. The trail was set. He definitely took over the Senate and, and it even snuck under some of our noses. Like, we didn't think, oh, yeah, Jar Jar giving him executive powers <laughs> in episode two was one of the reasons why he... And they say it here, too, is uh, if he doesn't step down after the war is ended, then we have to... have to take it into our own hands, <sighs> yeah. And, like, that's part of the genius of his plan. Like, And this is something, an element that I think a lot of people don't really think about, is why would you reveal who you are at this point before... Because he's got the nothing Jedi. to lose. Because he literally, I, he literally has I nothing to Senate. lose. He actually has more to gain by revealing it and having the Jedi come and attack him mm -hmm. and be the villains and be the villains because of that. Like he does it because he wants the Jedi to come there. He wants to unleash his power. It's he wants so an attempt good. on his life. Yeah. Like he. But the thing is, like a lot of people criticize Palpatine's plan because like it's all over the place. You're telling me this was it the whole way. But he like adapts to mm -hmm. every situation. That's what's so perfectly. scary about him. Yeah. It's not that he planned everything out. It's that he adapts and was able to hide in the background for so long until he already had control over everything. Like he was a Sith Lord under the Jedi Council's nose for so many years. And the Jedi knew nothing, not even a whiff. And I think his his best scene, because Ian McDermott comes from theater. Oh, he's a theater he's a Shakespearean actor, one hundred percent. And Lucas finally he gives him a, a dialogue, a lore heavy scene Ooh, in man. the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise during the bubble show during the during the Mon <laughs> Calamari bubble, bubble show. Yes, and Anakin sit down, leave us like the change in tone. Leave us. <laughs> and get like, out of your. Jumps. You think Anakin? How stupid can you be? This dude has done three evil head turns. He's talking about the dark side. This dude. is the Chancellor, bro. And he had laryngitis on shooting day. <laughs> how does he do it? No, and you get his. You get the most evil man in the galaxy. You get his backstory, mm -hmm. which I think it's always been there. But like, it, like that's so cool. That's such a cool element. Just a hint, and he doesn't even confirm it. A hint that. There was a master one time who <laughs> learned how to create life. And Plagueis, if you read the book, but Plagueis did learn how to literally create Metachlorians, to literally create life. Mm -hmm. It's ironic. He could save others from death. All his line delivery in that. Oh, it's one of the best scenes I in the I love the man. subtleties of his lies, too. It, so in that scene, he promises Anakin, if you join me, I will teach you how to, uh, how to save Padme from death. How to... Because... You said she's going to die, right? Or I know that. But he says it without saying it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then <laughs> after he's already pledged his loyalty, he's like, uh, so you know the thing I was talking about? So basically, <laughs> he knew how to do it, but 
we're going to figure out the secrets too. I know we uh, can discover this. I know we can do this. You know, go team. We're going to figure this one out. Right. I love that. It's so... The subtlety and, and the, the sincerity in his voice is so... So that that it's scene so that scene really bought me into uh, their relationship and how Anakin has never in his life had a father figure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had Qui Gon for like a day, and they did Obi Wan. But you know, we hear it later in the movie. You were my brother, right? That was more of a brother relationship. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's never had a, a father, and <sighs> we know from just the way that he, humans work, fathers are hugely important. And Palpatine. So expertly, whether he is his father or not, whatever, debate that, he slides into that role, into that mentorship role, and he's able to manipulate him from within because of a relationship that he's built with mm-hmm. him. And it it really like worked worked for me in this movie how he does that and just you know get, gets his like just takes over. He takes over this mm-hmm. this whole not only this trilogy but the next one too. Just you see his hand in all of it, and it really. And I really just made the the title a new hope just bang mm-hmm. even harder because that's what Luke is, you know. The Emperor he manipulated everyone mm-hmm. and he accounted for everything. Like his plan, sure, it's a mess sometimes, but every turn he's there and he's able to to stop it. But he didn't he didn't account for the little orphan boy. Yep. Yeah. And I you mentioned uh he was talking about a, a brotherhood, you know, like they were brothers. The, the scene really hit for me when he's like, I have to know. Yeah. And he's looking through the, through the, through the CCTV Ooh. footage Yeah, that some and people y- criticize. Like, why does the, why is there cameras in the Jedi council? How was he able to find the, whatever plot reasons? We got to move it needs this story. To happen, Come on. Okay? It's a good scene. And then he's like, please, he's like a brother to me. Oh, I'll do it. Yeah. That hurt me today. Oh man. Like, and I love Yoda is just this. He just he like already knows. Yeah, he he felt, like, yeah, you see it. Only pain you will find. Yeah, I no. love uh, Frank Oz changes his Yoda voice for this movie, and I like it in this. It's it's deeper. It's more. It's less of a cartoony Muppet and more of a character in this. Well, and and you'll from watching from watching the Clone Wars, he goes through many experiences and through a war. Like this is Yoda we're talking about. Like this is post from the Yoda. start of from the start. You get a very optimistic and sometimes annoying Yoda. He's he all weird. and But this, like, Yoda, I don't think he's, like, ever happy in this movie. Mm-hmm. And you get it from at the end of Attack of the Clones. Oh, man. Yoda on Kashyyyk, it's just constantly, he's grabbing his heart. He's like, holy crap. Yep. Yeah, every time a Jedi dies, it cuts to him. Mm-hmm. And we're like, wow, they're... people are dying. You feel the weight of these deaths. <laughs> and you wanna... Even though you don't yeah. know these characters very much. I, I love in Order sixty six. It makes you feel for these like the relationships. You you see the trust of these clones and their Jedi general on screen in just the few short seconds. And yeah, it's expanded on the Clone Wars, but you don't need the Clone Wars for these relationships. You can get the idea of it and still have it be passable. I I love it. I love how they take the time to sit on these characters' faces. They sit on the landscape shots. I love the 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 back and forth with Padme and Anakin while they're sit they're standing looking out the windows. Oh man! <laughs> oh, he's the, in the Jedi Temple in in the Council Room, and she's in their like apartment or whatever the penthouse. And the score is sweeping. Nobody's saying anything. Yep. But it's just going back and forth, back and forth, and then eventually you see the tear go down Anakin's face. So good. When when the music, the, Star Wars has a lot of moments like this. Mm-hmm. When the music tells the story, and John Williams is in no doubt such a huge factor in my enjoyment of the prequels. But this, when you think about it, this is this is genuinely like akin to that scene in A New Hope when Luke stares off into the sunset, mm-hmm. a galaxy full of uh, like experiences and thrills is out there, and he just needs to take it. But this time. We get the complete opposite. Anakin and Padme are basically looking out into the stars. The sun is setting, basically mm. on the Republic, and all of it is said without words. You know exactly what's going through their minds. Padme, what the heck is going on? I, I am. I just feel like there's horrible things happening. And Anakin going through the biggest struggle you can experience as a, a married man. Do I save my wife? Because Palpatine, he's my link to saving my wife, or or do I do I go the route of 
you know, the right route of waiting in the council chambers, waiting for it, following the rules. And it's a duel of the fates. I I think it's really just really well done how the, the Jedi in there is Mace Windu. Because I feel like if it was any other Jedi in there, Anakin probably wouldn't have been Darth Vader. But Mace Windu is just the perfect guy to put there because he stinks. He he's so mean to Anakin in these movies, just just passively. And he's like, it's like, well, that that prophecy we misread that. Come on, this is insane. Mm. This guy sucks. We're not gonna grant you master. Are you kidding me? And like you. You have to look at the genius of that story. Like Yoda's off world, Obi Wan's off world, Padme's off in her apartment. Everyone and Anakin so split is, up in this. Yes, Anakin is with the one person that Palpatine wants him to do with himself. Mm -hmm. The one person who is on Coruscant, besides Padme, obviously, who genuinely, as far as Anakin is concerned, gives a crap about him. And expanded Ahsoka. She's on Mandalore. She's fighting I, I, Maul right I, there. <laughs> The clone, the last four episodes are like this. It expands on the themes of this to the tenth degree, which is perfect. But yes, you're right. She's even separate. It mm -hmm. the what if Star Wars has never been more interesting than what if Revenge of the Sith? What if this happened in mm -hmm. Revenge of the Sith? What if Ahsoka was on Coruscant? On what Revenge if Anakin of the Sith? got therapy instead of the <laughs> Jedi Council? What if Yoda was on? <laughs> Yeah. like that may have been different as well mm -hmm. but you're right ethan it's genius that windu is the <laughs> only one there and it yeah. that's true would it have happened if if any other jedi was there did you notice that the reason why it's only mace windu there is because palpatine sent everybody out the clones uh the the uh droids were infiltrating kashik they needed clone reinforcements yep. they needed a jedi to go with them uh, General Grievous was somehow just found on Utapau. We got to send another Jedi out there. You know, everyone was sent out uh, with, during Order 66. All of these generals were already out on yes. missions. So all that's left are these... I mean, yeah, there's... During Order 66, a lot of Jedi are still killed at the temple, but they're recalled during Order 66 because any that were out needed to come back so that the clones can kill them in this trap. Hmm. Everything was accounted for Everything can be assumed to be planned by the puppeteer of it all, Sheev Palpatine. Sheev. Sheev. <laughs> Sheev. And that, like, <laughs> that's one of my favorite parts about this is because with all of that, with all that planning, with all the genius plot and the how Lucas works into this, my central focus is not on all of that. It's cool to look at. It sure is. Mm -hmm. And it begs questions that I love looking into. But the center of my focus is the tragedy and fall of Anakin. Of Darth Plagueis. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> his journey you as he goes... You could make the argument that it's all centered around that too. But That's true. But watching him take his turn, I mean, almost everything he does, like, you see where his mind is at, and, like, it's... it's you can't justify it. There's no way, especially killing younglings. There's no way you can justify that. And I like that Lucas toes the line of a sympathetic villain... <laughs> But he's also still definitely the villain. Mm -hmm. Like, he does become Darth Vader. He is evil. But then there's also the victim side of it, where it's like, all of this might not all truly 100% be Anakin's fault. Like, he's He is believing seduced. that he's doing the right thing. Yeah. Because he has always been uh, of the mindset of, we have to have, you know, less debate. Let's just do this. You know, let's just... So let's get rid of the Senate. Let's get rid of the mm -hmm. Separatist. Let's just have it be one guy who decides everything for us. And that was very clear in episode two when they're out on the plains and and they're having their little premarital counseling sesh talking about their <laughs> about their politics. It, it's very clearly laid out. And if they didn't have all those moments in episode one, episode two, talking about their feelings, talking about their politics, we wouldn't have been able to see how it all led up to how he is in episode three mm. and how he leads the the empire in the original trilogy. It's all written in there. Yeah. And that's what I love about the prequel trilogy. It's not just a lot of people chalk it up to badly written dialogue, badly written. I see it as kind of kind of genius. Not gonna lie. <laughs> the overarching plot without a doubt is genius. A yes. gen two geniuses see it as genius. And look at that. That like and that but one chump sees it as chump. 
Did I say? Have I? No, oh, I didn't I say anything. Guys, about you. I have been very, very Ethan light. Has been remarkably <laughs> positive, positive this whole podcast, guys. I have which, one uh, negative, a little, little, little nitpick I want to say about this movie, uh, and it's one Obi Wan line that uh, I famously had many takes because they couldn't stop laughing during it. It's uh, I have seen a holog- uh, a security hologram of him killing younglings. That ruins the, if you know the lore behind. Not the that's lore, the only line that the kills it for me is because he laughs so much and you can totally see that he's he's acting there. Like that's the only one that that breaks right, the It's not natural. Me. Like why is he yeah. doing? Why is he covering his? He's mouth? covering his mouth. But if you, I, I truly laughing. believe if you didn't know the behind the scenes yeah. story, it would be fine. And it is tragic. That's like the only line for me. They cut out all the bad ones and then deleted scenes. <laughs> There are some bad. Oh man, scenes, there are yeah. some bad deleted scenes. Which um, maybe the four-hour cut would have been bad. <laughs> I don't. Mm, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it either way. For the sake of time, gentlemen. Yes. I think we need to move. I've on said to, just about everything I need to say. Like, obviously, obviously we, do you have anything? We to can say? talk about this movie for. Do we have so any, long any bad things to say? Because we've said tons of good things. Everyone's always said good things. So thi- this is a start with a compliment and then kind of turn into a negativity. But something that stood out to me in this watch is that I always viewed this one as the, the action heavy movie. Yes. But right after the opening rescue sequence, there's a good like 30, maybe four. I don't know how long it is, but there's a good chunk where it's all just, you know, setting the states stakes for this movie. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really, really good. But I do think at points, sequences go... The momentum loses. You lose a lot of the momentum Mm -hmm. in a lot of scenes. I think Uh, the the Grievous fight, the start of it is great, but I think it goes on a little too long. Mm. And then... Like the chase could have been cut down. Yeah. And we'll we'll talk about it when we rank... That was almost a level in the Lego game. Rank lightsaber duels, but I think a few of the lightsaber duels kind of fall flat for me. Let's Mm. segue right into it. Let's talk about Let's the go. lightsaber duel. So Real quick, I do like movie. the uh, the interactions between Anakin and Obi-Wan. You can totally see how that translation yep. translates to the Clone Wars. That's all I got to say. Really good stuff. Yep. And it's like he was the best star pilot in the galaxy, and Obi-Wan talks about him in A New Hope being a friend, and you really see that you know, relationship yeah. here. Yeah. So yeah. I like that. But lightsaber duel. really duels. set up everything they need to for episode We got, four. what, five to add? Five? Is we it have, five? All right, let's count them out. Count Dooku. We have Grievous. Yep. We have uh, the takedown of Palpatine oh with the the four chumps going in there with Mace Windu, Windu and Palpatine, and then we yep. have Wind or we have Yoda and Palpatine, and then we have Anakin, Obi Wan. Am I missing That's, one? I don't think you are because we we yeah, don't want to count the the um the guards, dr- Grievous guards versus <laughs> versus because we we count <laughs> no 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 not Where Yoda goes, <laughs> versus uh Obi Wan and Anakin. You know when he chops the head off. Of the droid that's I, going berserko. You know what I'm talking about, Micah? Uh, I wasn't paying attention. To what you I did. think we can omit, omit that. that one. Yeah, I even think though we, we allowed Noah versus Tarek, dude, from that the, one's the just battle peak, for we Endor. have to include that one. <laughs> but yeah, okay, let's start with the first one. Yeah, go in order. Dooku and Anakin d- flip off, dude. Chancellor Palpatine, Sith Lords are our special. So for these, we we have to go back to the. The rules of this ranking because, um, when it came to rating the first few, there are seen like we did in the the Vader versus Luke in Empire, mm. we didn't allow the I'm your father reveal to leak into that score, and mm-hmm. we didn't allow the the Luke Vader scene unmasking scene to leak into that duel. So, what with these duels, do we not allow leaking into them? Because, so, yeah, Dooku dies. Is but that, that's not a part of it's it. It's not a part of the duel. Uh, Although I guess you could. He does it with a lightsaber. Yeah, that I'd say that's part of it. Hmm. That's interesting, man. I I See, say that, that's why I say yeah. we the duel the, the duel is this. done in uh, episode five when the hand is cut off. That's mm-hmm. the end of the duel. Yep. So, but the, for, can't you say the end of this duel is when when Dooku's hand Dooku was defeated? Off? So Luke was defeated and cornered at the end of that. Bespin okay. antenna thingy. That's what I would say. Because I just think that that drastically changes the ranking of That's this. That's fair. That's because fair. And honestly, it goes yeah. from this scene to literally the start of the turn of Anakin. But I, I mean, you have to look at these duels 
as as a duel. Like even the dialogue as part of the duel, even though it is good, like that has some <laughs> that has some <laughs> clairvoyance. Anakin versus Young Guns. <clears throat> but yeah. <laughs> it's it's the duel that holds the most weight, right. without a doubt. And so you get a lot of Anakin versus Dooku in this. Obi Wan does not do the most in this. He gets chumped out pretty easily. Like, pretty the quick. way that Dooku forces the the whatever the shelf or whatever falls onto uh, Obi Wan, I'm always like, that would totally just crush his leg. The 100%. way it falls and the speed. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um. Ooh, where do we put this one, guys? So. Qui Gon versus Maul on Tatooine. Our list. Yeah, Qui Gon versus Maul on Tatooine is our least, uh, our least. So ranked. right now, our, our top three lightsaber yeah. duels. We have Duel of the Fates at number one. We think that just kind of matched, kind of got everything right. And we had Vader versus Luke on which one is that? That's Episode Six. Yep. Episode Six. That's on the Emperor's Throne Room. And we have Vader versus Luke uh, in Episode Five. Yeah, mm-hmm. those are top three. And um, I don't know if you want to read the whole list. Uh, now. We got Yoda, Dooku in episode two, Anakin, Obi-Wan versus Dooku two, Obi-Wan versus Vader in uh, New Hope, and Qui-Gon versus Maul and Tatooine on one, and Noah versus Tarek in Battle for Endor. Peak scene, go look Peak. it up if you want. Noah versus Tarek. Technically not a lightsaber duel, but it is a duel. Uh, uh, I, I think we can say Mace Windu versus Emperor is our worst one in this movie, right? Can we say that? Because uh, there's not a whole lot of lightsaber it's just, dueling. Yeah. It's just like standing around and it is cool, talking. Though. It it's is cool really cool. It. Really but good. as a lightsaber fight, I don't think it really holds up. That's fair. So I then, would put it above Obi Wan versus Vader. I would almost. I would actually go above Anakin and Dooku as well. Really, I would put it in here, episode two, just because there isn't as much uh, back and forth I, fighting with it. I, I like it up one, up you, one more spot. Yeah, because you don't like that duel. <laughs> well, so like you don't like this. That duel is buns. Dude. Mace Windu is dueling with a purple lightsaber, and that that alone yeah. is. And, and you're and even though a lot of it, and that's my one of my biggest nitpicks with this movie is that duel in and of itself. Well, that actually that whole lead up to it, they go out. It's it's hard not to see that as just they go out like chumps, but. <laughs> Mace Windu dueling so, Palpatine. There I'll are say, some really cool. That's scenes. one of the biggest complaints of this movie that I've heard is that they do die like chumps. Yeah, it's they, like they're Jedi, <laughs> man. They, they got to be a little better than like that. Like you want to, yeah, like because you get you want to see the Emperor take down four Jedi, mm-hmm. but it doesn't help that three of them just are not good at being Jedi. At least what we see in this movie. Mm-hmm. But I do want to highlight how with the. The original trilogy, I don't remember seeing it for the first time. With this movie, I remember the first time I ever watched it. And this scene specifically, I know we all have scenes in our life that like are gut sunk. Like you feel that gut feeling like, oh, I did not like that. Mm-hmm. When oh, Mace Windu falls out the window. Yes, technically that's after the duel, so it doesn't factor in. But I want to talk about it anyway. That's part of the duel. He's like fighting still. No, no, no. Okay. That, that's over. Okay. But when he flies out the window... I was like, oh, wow. He went far. That <laughs> hurt. Like, it, mm-hmm. you felt mm-hmm. Anakin fall in that And scene. that was the beginning of, like, everything's what have I done. done. What have I done? What have yeah. I done? Yeah. I would, with that argument, I would I would almost put it over Yoda versus Dooku. Well, but that doesn't factor in. See, it's oh, just it's the so, No, no, with, with, like, your, uh, I don't know. I, I would say. Because uh, we have to, like, when, when does the, the scene end and the duel Begin, I would or when say it ends when he's launched out the if window. Because ca- if lightsaber. we're counting the whole scenes for these, like... No, we'd not have the whole scene. I know, we're not, but we'd have to change the whole yeah. list. It's so. just the duel. Just it's the duel. Ju- it's a love and I the think lightsaber duel, fight. Okay. G- six, I like it at Well, then just with the five. lightsaber fight, I would put it lower, but I'll, I'll, let, I'll let that we one both, slide. We both, yeah. Right You're there. You're out okay. averaged it out. Yeah. Um, I think the next one would be Count Dooku versus Anakin and Obi-Wan. The other three, I think, are better. Yes or no? Sure. I would have leaned more towards... Uh, I'm 50-50 Grievous versus Obi-Wan, Count Dooku versus... So Grievous is cool. Yeah, Grievous is really cool. Grievous also kind of goes out you like a what? chump. You, you guys are... Act- I I will take that back. I agree, actually. Grievous and Obi-Wan is the next Because, yeah, worst. you get the reveal of the forearms, and that's super cool, and the helicopter spinning lightsabers. But then it takes Obi-Wan about a second to cut off three of his arms. Yeah. So th- it's really quick. And then quick. he flees. So yeah. I'd say that one's our next one. And uh, 
I would put it here, honestly. Ooh. Oh, no Whoa. way. That's Not where that I would low. put it. No way. Because Mike I is really putting like it second oh, from the Buffett. bottom. I would I would put this above Obi Wan and Vader in a new hope. Okay. That's that's where I that's where I would go. But would you put it uh no, I keep it under that one. Yeah. Okay. So just under the Obi Wan Anakin versus Dooku fight in episode two. Okay. All right, next. I like that. Dooku versus uh Dooku, the rematch. Dooku <laughs> the Anakin rematch and Obi Wan. Which I, I think is Oh, maybe even better than Yoda versus Dooku. It's it's pretty quick. It is quick, but the lightsaber choreography between Hayden and it's really good. Count it sets Dooku's the tone double. for the whole thing. <laughs> I love how uh, immediately it's like, oh yeah, we are in for a quick paced duel the fates level. You know, shorter fight scene, sure. Yeah, but that level of choreography, they have mastered their craft. They're ready to go, and, and that's what I love about it. I know we don't like to talk about dialogue, but this is during the fight, like literally when they're locking blades and he's like, I sense much fear in you, Skywalker. Mm. And like, you start to get a sense of where Anakin's mind is at because of Dooku. So I, that, I like that too. I would go above Yoda versus Dooku. I would that. as well. Yeah, okay. I'd agree. I'd agree. So we put this one uh, right right below the episode five episode duel five. Yep. and Fourth right place. above the Yoda versus Dooku duel. And okay. Yoda versus Palpatine. This one it, has some really cool force powers in it. I love when they're throwing around yes. the, and then, uh, so he, he gets the, the force lightning. He holds it in his, in his hands, just like what he did for count Dooku, but it shows that he can't hold Palpatine's force lightning. Cause it's so much stronger and they like blast off. Right. That's super cool. Uh, then they're throwing around the seats in the Senate the whole room was oh, built for that. <laughs> when they're rising up and they're dueling as the pod mm. comes up, that's so really sick. cool cinematography <laughs> for it. I do, man. I mm. this is a tough one, guys. So it, I think it kind of, it's very good, but some something about it is missing for me. I don't know what that is. It just it just felt like the stakes don't seem that high because like, we know that both of them are going to come out with all their limbs with you know no permanent damage, so you know that the the fight is a uh, bit a bit useless. But and, and it also just felt flees. like it felt like okay, um, Obi Wan's fighting Anakin. What 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 does Yoda need to do right now? Mm. And yeah, I love that they get to duel it out, but it kind of it feels to me it feels like nothing because it's super cool spectacle. But Yoda kind of just, you know, leaves at the end of it. It's like, all right, whatever. I I don't know. But like, just just as a concept, you have the best Jedi at that point, the mm-hmm. most powerful versus mm-hmm. the most powerful Sith, mm-hmm. two huge staples. And then they oh, get to It's duel. super cool. Like, yeah, but, but duel, how Fate's cool playing it? in the background. I, I, dude, I personally, I think this is like the second best. Like, I put really? this under Duel of the Fates. Mm-hmm. I, I really like the Yoda versus Palpatine. I would fight. not go above but any of the. Lore. I would be fine with this. Um, under Vader versus Luke in Return of the Jedi. Yeah. But that puts it above Luke's first lightsaber duel ever. Yeah, that's fine. No, no, his first lightsaber duel was with the training droid. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, he duels uh, himself. It's just, in it's a such cave. a cool battle, man. Like, I know there's my, there might be something miss, missing there, but the choreography, the force powers, I just, I really just, like it. So man. to me, emotional stakes during the duel way into yes, it a ton it does mm-hmm. yeah. and there aren't a lot i get out of yoda versus palpatine whereas with luke and vader i get a ton out of that mm-hmm. so i i would put it under both luke vader duels but this is a this is a democracy right yeah here. i will defend the the yoda fighting in this real quick because a lot of people don't like that yoda fights in these at all yep. uh i think that he had to prove that he can survive order 66 so that's right. that's why. I so think Lore Master Ben, why does Yoda need a cane when he can fight this way? So I I've always kind of looked at it as like that the one old master, the one old guy who kind of he doesn't feign it because he is that way, Ugui. but a lot of like Ugwe, a lot of himself, he's able to draw on the strength of the Force when he needs it to. It just drains him when he does. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's how. That's kind of how. So I where do we it. want to throw this? I'm thinking this range somewhere around here. Are you cool with um, third place right now? I'm not cool with that. You're but not cool with it. I would you be cool with this? I would. Ben, would you be? Cool I would with really this? like that because these just, ones are iconic. They are, but they're just the duel itself. Yeah. Even I mean, even for the second Luke versus Vader one is not is not there for me. I like, would have put Luke versus Vader part two uh, further down, but 
Oh, dude, the final duel is so epic, though. Mm-hmm. I can we put it in the middle between those two? I'm fine with that. Are you fine with that, Ethan? No, but let's let's get. We averaged it out because I would put on. it. I would put yep. it further down. Ethan or Ben would put it up. It averages out to around. Okay, there. all right. And a converse Obi Wan. Are we are we cool with that? I am. Yeah, this is the best one. First first place. I no contest. Think it is a contest with what? Ooh, one? okay. With Duel of the Fates. Yes, this to me with the not Duel of the Fates with uh this I would put fourth because whoa here I got okay. a few reasons. It's too long. Okay. It's overly choreographed. The stakes are too vague because lava planet. It just, it, like, listen, I like the duel, but to me, the best part of this duel is the dialogue between fighting. Mm. The, you were my brother, great oh. scene, and then you were the, cho- is that the same part? When, when are they on the, yeah, on the floating? Yeah, same, yeah. same part. Yeah. No, no, like, it's a, it's a different scene. That's, oh, I have failed you, Anakin. Yeah, that scene. I have failed that, you, To yeah. me, the dialogue is the best part of the scene, whereas, like, yeah, the spectacle is, is huge, but, like, the choreography is so evident for me that it's it's because there's that one scene where they're like, like they're just twirling their lightsabers for like yeah it's cool I love it yeah. but to me it like I there's I know lore you, reasons I know you whatever I don't care about the lore I care about but it, why but it makes it it really does make sense in the context mm-hmm. of how you view this as two dudes who have literally trained together since Anakin was nine years right. old right they trained should for seem choreographed because they know each other's moves. Like no other, mm-hmm. like, and that's literally the reason why Obi Wan wins this fight. Vader, at this point, he is Vader, is more powerful than Obi Wan, mm-hmm. but because he knows Anakin and he knows how prideful he is and he knows mm-hmm. his moves, he's able to use that against him. He's able to use the hubris of the Sith against him. That's how he wins. But because, like the the scene you talk about that you don't really like when it, they're just twirling their blades mm-hmm. back and forth, that scene literally gives me chills every time I watch it because. Mm-hmm. And the way that how brutal it is, they're kicking each other. Anakin's like got him ch- in a chokehold. Like, I I think this is the best one because it has it has Duel of the Fates level choreography in my opinion, even better than that. But also the emotion that is a little bit absent from Duel of the Fates because mm-hmm. the Duel of the Fates is cool choreography wise, and maybe even a little better because it has a double lightsaber. But this has all of it, man. Yeah, I I knew it would end up at. At one, but I just want to say why I don't think it's one. Yeah. I think it's already. But you would put this at four. Yeah. I think it goes for like me it, way I, lower. I put it under both Luke Vader duels and I put it under Duel of the Fates because really? Duel of the Fates, I think, just is a perfect mesh of everything. I think the choreography is right where I want it. I think the spectacle is right where I want it. I think the stakes right where I want it. And you get you get the unveiling of the Duel of the Fates for the first time. That I because I, I like the 2v1. I, I, I yeah. think that one that one's my favorite Duel of the Fates, but I understand putting... I knew going in that this one would be the number one. I just wanted to say why it's not my number one. Okay. All right. Well, but I, I, I but still if you're really going like down four levels, like like to average that out, I know both no, of us No, but I know your, best, but... your, your two, two's love outweighs... The way I pull it down. So you are you are fine with. That I being... I like all these. The top four okay. I really really like. Okay. So I'm okay with that. Okay. And the top four is Micah. If you could Just read, read all. the top number four. Number one is Anakin v Obi Wan in Episode Three. Uh, number two is Duel of the Fates from Episode One. That's Qui Gon Obi Wan versus Maul. Uh, third place is Vader versus Luke in Episode Six. That's the very end of the movie. Fourth place is Yoda versus Palpatine from Episode Three. Uh, our top three for episode three is, oh, I guess our ranking for episode three is Anakin versus Obi-Wan, then Yoda versus Palpatine, then Count Dooku versus Anakin and Obi-Wan, and then Mace Windu versus Emperor, and then last place, Grievous versus Obi-Wan. You guys cool with that? Dang. I, I just, I did not expect, although I agree with that Grievous versus Obi-Wan is the, I guess it's not really as much a lightsaber duel. Like, and it's the just choreography's kind of like, all yeah. over the place. It's very yeah. cool, yeah. but... Yeah. Also, it's he's a coward, so true. he just kind of runs away. Yeah, Grievous his, will run his, uh, high, like, I used to have that little uh, Grievous car thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Lego? No, 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 not Lego. I had the Lego one. Well, they made you. a bunch of like, like crappy character action cars for. Yeah, I've got a bunch of Transformers from this movie. Yeah, it's weird. Anyway, uh, favorite characters. Favorite let's characters. let's do favorite character, favorite scene. Um, because I mean, 
if there's anything we haven't talked about yet, I know it'll come up. <laughs> I want to highlight a couple things too. I knew we but, were we were flying through this a little too quick. Well, we found I mean, about this thirty minute detour right here <laughs> with your character favorite scene. Um, I got to go with my man Co Bibble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seal Bibble, dude, he comes. He, he's in every all so, three of them. So, Ben, are you going with obscure character again? Yes. So, can I try to guess it? Yeah, I don't, you could, I don't know his name, but the Jedi that saves Senator Organa, Jet Lucas, Lucas's son. Would that have dude? been your pick? No, he is not no. my pick. Um, I just right when the scene happened, I'm like, this feels like a scene Ben would Ben would pick because of the way he say it. He just comes in. <laughs> he's a boss for like. Uh, whatever. I think he was trying to seconds, escape. Though. I don't know if he was really. And then he died. Well, well, yeah, he whatever. Both, both ways. Yeah. That like that's his way out. Yeah. Too. <laughs> yeah. Um, ben, do you want to lead the way then? I yeah, I will actually. So, Favorite character? obscure characters. Um, I've I always try and pick someone who's not, and he he is a character, but in the context of this film, he's not. You you don't really see that, and I I got to go with a clone. Because the clones are one of my favorite parts of Star Wars, and he is barely in this movie, but He's barely talked about the clones either. Cody, Cody, Co- I, Cody is my pick. Commander Cody, just because his just his brief few scenes, like you see the character and the the history between the two. All right, the burden is on me to not kill all the droids it, before you arrive. It like set set the bar high going into the Clone Wars show, mm-hmm. where you're like, Cody is the single handle hand or single handedly the coolest clone trooper. Then you watch Clone Wars, and you're like, oh, wait, this guy Rex is, oh, he's pretty cool, too. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah co- just a cool character simply because of his look. Oh. Yeah, right there. He, he's yellow. The clone's <laughs> Phase 2 armor, yeah. like all the Man different Cody. designs he's of the yellow. Phase 2 yeah, armor. Yellow. Cody's not yellow. Orange. He's orange? Orange. Yeah, oh, I'm just colorblind. You orange. are very much colorblind. That's yellow on Yellow, the yellow is the, the clones who gun down Ayla Secura on Commander Sulu- Bly. Yeah. Oh, I always thought that was yellow. That is I've just so, got, uh, so obviously orange. I've just got a Mandela effect. There on we go. Boy. The dyed is yellow right there versus his color on his uh, armor. But I like I got with with Cody. I got to highlight all the clones in this because you don't really get to see like a lot of them. But all the different phase two armor designs in this mm-hmm. commander Bakara on the the guy who kills. So Kiati. sad they weren't real. Yeah. Like it wasn't. Oh, I know. CGI. Yeah. 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 Um, but the guy who kills Count Dooku, they got that the Phase One prototype Snowtrooper armor on. Um, the Commander, Kashyyyk Trooper, the Kashyyyk Commander. That guy's my Commander favorite. Gree. Oh my gosh! Yeah, he he kills in Count Wars Dooku. Too. What did you you misspoke? Kiati Mundi. Yeah, that's, there we go. that's who I meant. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Commander <laughs> Commander Bly. I missed that scene. Yeah. Uh, and um, Bly is a really cool character. Yeah, yeah, he is. And Commander Nao, who kills Stas Ali on uh, Salukamai. How did, so? Without the context of. Because for for <laughs> for many many years, Order sixty six was the clone troopers just fought alongside the Jedi, and then when Order sixty six was up, they just turned. Their, those relationships were false. How do we like the inhibitor chip playing into this? And obviously, great change. But without that, what is this? It opens up for more story because without the inhibitor chip, you couldn't have had it removed at some point, so you can't have redemption clones. And I I think that just helps to the, the lore it it makes it significantly more believable where they're not just all a hundred percent entire time mm-hmm. like cody like you can see it the camaraderie thank you cody all right now we've got a battle to win here let's get a move on you know like all right thank you sir and then right there there's a change like it, yeah. it seems just too mechanical there's and no there, way we're seeing it right now with the bad batch but clones are like to me th- like some of the most tragic characters in all of star wars and the movies give you none of that. Yep. Because there's no... T- it's Anakin's story. It's right. Obi-Wan's it story. It's yeah. Padme's he, story. Like, I think that George Lucas put that in there uh, just for Extended Universe. He knew that people would talk about it. He n- probably knew that the Clone Wars show was coming out in the next year. He did announce so, it, yeah. Like, why would he focus on the clones if they're going to get a whole show? Yeah, true. But you don't... Like, that's the thing. You just don't have time enough. But it's just like yeah. uh, uh, Luke's Jedi Academy. He Like... <laughs> There's not going to be a movie about it if you already know that it happens in extended universe, right? I That's just why think they you it. rob yourself of a lot of story by not at least watching some of the animated stuff. Yep. And Again, I had done that for years. I'd rob myself of so much story, and I've come a 
super long way with my love for these movies and this movie this movie specifically it's this yeah. one without a doubt it's enhanced mm-hmm. so much yes um but Cody, Cody is mine. Okay. Cody is my character. All right. I had yeah. a yellow clone trooper that was the yellow one, and I always called him Commander Cody. That's why I thought it was. Well, no, so <laughs> the the Lego minifigure is yellow. Oh, based off of Commander Cody. Yes, Ooh. it's supposed the original to be, one. But yeah, because the new yeah. one's orange. The, oh, the new ones they have it all right. Because I had the it was OG that... yellow one with like the yellow line. Mm-hmm. It was nice. Like that was supposed to be like if you play the Lego game mm. for the Grievous level, you can only be if you're playing two player Obi Wan and Cody. And Cody is yellow. He does have the yellow. That's arm. why I thought he was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm not wrong. I'm just. Lego was wrong. Lego is wrong. It's yeah. a Han Solo coat thing coming back. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Michael, who's your favorite character? So I was bouncing between. All right. Do I like Obi Wan more? Do I like Anakin more? I'm going to go with Obi Wan because this watch, uh, he really hit me emotionally. The uh, connections he had with Padme, talking about, you know, feelings and how expressing the Jedi do have feelings. And. Oh, it was so good how he's he's like, I'm here for you, Padme. Like, I'm gonna go help I'm Anakin. I'm here now. for you, Padme. I love you, Padme. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I, I just the... love that scene. I love the emotion he he has uh, on Mustafar. Of course, everything's already been said. It's just when when oh. he when he you were my brother, Padme. Anakin. Yeah, when her, him and Padme are talking, and he ends the scene like he's got to go find him, and mm-hmm. he turns back, he and says, the music is sorry. Throwing. Anakin is the father, isn't he? And the music swells, and I'm so sorry. Like mm. he just it, genuinely, he doesn't care about the rules at that point. That it's line just, was so because like, he already knows things are falling apart. The, yep, you can't stop it. So in the so good in the grand plan of Yoda and Obi Wan, what what are they waiting for with Luke? So why do they wait so long to train him or to even really formally? I know it's retroactively the original trilogy working, but lore wise, is there a reason why Obi Wan waits so long? Actually, to start training Luke? <laughs> if you watch the Kenobi show, oh, oh, uh, there is actually Owen actively tries to keep Luke out of the Jedi business. Mm-hmm. Like Obi Wan is trying to, he's like, no, well, we got to start like. Got to move this process along. Like he must be trained as a Jedi. I know he's strong with the Force. Remember, he like barely even gets him that Skyhopper. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, re- guys, you heard it. Ben <sighs> just praised. He says that the Kenobi. The I knew Kenobi I put the pop show, out. guys. Listen, man, there are some really good things in that show. It's just overall, it fails mass. Let me. I think years down the line, the show will be looked at very differently. If we don't look at the Kenobi show will. as a just Kenobi show, kind of like with Book of Boba Fett. There are some redeeming qualities. No, to it. <laughs> all right. Book of Boba Fett stands as a better Mandalorian season four or whatever it was. <laughs> I two episodes of that show are good. Yeah, the end one Starfighter arc is just unparalleled. Hey, we have that show to thank for the current state of this podcast and for my Lego. That's true. My actually, Lego set, yeah. my favorite. One. All right, my yeah. favorite character yeah. is yeah. I want to throw Love Hayden's way, but I gotta go General Boss, Grievous. Oh, Ooh. just because. Really, the, after we just dumped listen, on his this. His his death and duel, whatever, it's not the the greatest, but that character is so cool. And Have you read up on him before? He's got some cool, like really his, his cool species. expanded lore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like I, I remember going on the Wikipedia. I don't remember what uh, it all said, but yeah, you see organs and stuff and his eyes. I think the character design is super cool. And he's just one of those characters you meet and there's just so much to him. He's like a Oh, this will make a fine addition. Uh, whatever, yeah, my man. Would, a fine adi- addition to my collection. <laughs> I thought yeah, I can no, we can't even do a general grievous. Yeah. But I think the look of him, the sound of him, <laughs> the forearms, the lightsabers, just the what he does for this whole movie, I thought it was really cool. And yeah, he, he dies, whatever. I just think props to George Lucas and just the character design of General Grievous. It's it's a really cool. He's just a design. snotty eye, a little you know. You know I thought he'd be taller Shop. or whatever. He is super OP though. Very cool in the Clone Wars animated series. And right, the only lightsaber wielder that isn't Force sensitive in the movies so far, Han Solo. I, no, no, we're not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, you're right. You're you know right. What I'm saying though, like yep. who engages in active combat. Finn. Yep. No, we're not talking about the sequel. We're talking about where we are right now, okay? And what? Maybe Finn is force sensitive. We'll Maz, talk about Maz talk about Maz Katana. Maz Katana. Um, 
favorite scene. Favorite mm. scene, gentlemen. I, I mean, mm. there is a billion you could pick from. In- it really is. I it It's so impressive, oh. the the scenes in this movie, because every, you know, we we were all here last week. Mm. I still... We were. I, do I not, was here last week. I do not like Attack of the Clones, and many people you know, came to defend me and support me, but people do like that movie. I was just really impressed with this entire movie as a whole, with this whole movie... So picking a favorite scene will be really fun right now, and I don't envy the person who has to go first. I I'll go first. Okay, go ahead, go ahead Micah. Micah. Uh, the, <laughs> just because of just because it's it's recency bias, and that I listened to that whole lower dump of twelve hours brief analysis on Phantom Menace, the Darth Plagueis the Wise scene. I love that. I love. I mean, it, it's a great scene. It's not a cheap shot, but uh, his delivery, the just the the writing of the story, how it, how he just so sinister as he says it it's just amazing uh i love it we already kind of talked about it earlier let's get the show on the road yeah that's i i will go next ethan yeah go you ha- okay um i mean there's many to choose from and i thought a long time about this but the scene that really stirs so much emotion in me is when anik when padme she touches down on mustafar and anakin runs to her mm. in their conversation about i teared up where <laughs> Three times going, in this basically. movie? Yeah. Three oh, times. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. I have never teared yes. up in a Star Wars, Dude. I don't think. Because you can see all she wants. She, she even says, it. all I want is your love. Mm. And the kid's like, don't you see? Love won't save you, Padme. Only my new powers can do that. Like, he is so blinded by that. And I love just, the foreshadowing where she says, blinded by love earlier in the movie. Like, so love is blinded. Oh. You. All this to save Padme, and he doesn't even realize that because of this, like one often, like Master Uwe says, one often meets his destiny on a path to prevent it. But man, is that see the dialogue written there is so good. Mm. No, stop, come back. I love you. And then he starts like, dude, I cannot follow. And then I, I know this is technically a different scene, but what follows there between Anakin and Obi Wan, like their argument, basically. Well, then you are lost. Like, my allegiance is to the Republic. And it's so, when you look at it, it's so sad. You turn her against me. Especially after the Clone Wars. Because you sit there and you watch these two dudes who are genuinely friends. And they're going back and forth. And he, he's, Anakin's gone. Anakin is gone. Then you are lost. So something that, like, it, it always stood out to me. But in this movie, it really was, like, that's really just weird that they did that was... Padme dies because she wants to. Is that why she dies? She is sad. She's sad. She, she, loses, she loses sad. the she will to live. She broken heart. Yes. So You're breaking my heart. I don't know. I feel like Lucas put so much into this movie. He could have put a little something else More there. Some, into could that. Say, yeah. some could say that uh, in his anger, he did kill her by the uh, force going through So. That's, yeah, that's another thing that's up to interpretation. Force Why truly broke her did heart? she die? Yeah, like yeah. because his just pure love for her uh, through his anger, through his the it, he was kind of like channeling force to her. I don't know. It, this is head uh, to to heal her because she he was, was he was thinking about then? he was thinking about her so much that the force was too strong for her. I don't know. Yeah, it was real evident in that scene too, where he's he force chokes her, and then he <laughs> he doesn't even go to check on her. Obi Wan's the one who's like, "Well, he's blinded by trying to save her. Like that, he, he's not thinking about her he at all." He literally <laughs> has he literally has such a hatred also for Obi Wan because, like, at that point in the movie, it's like you you you're on this planet. Right. You don't know what I've just gone through. He literally this is a guy who just slaughtered kids. You know, like. I don't think that is at the top of his mind. He's thinking about this version of Padme that's up on a penthouse, that's and you know a damsel yes. in distress. But you not this yeah Padme that's against her, that's against him. I mean, no, you actually have to look at it that way, like literally that way. Like yeah. you turned her against me. Is this about Obi Wan? Because of Obi Wan, are you here because of him? He turned you against me. That that's mm-hmm. what it is. So now Padme is like, well, wait a minute, hold on, and. The only time he can stop and absolutely like think through what he's done, he has the suit on. 
Mm-hmm. Where is Padme? Is she safe? And that dude, that fuels the tragedy. Because there are yeah. so many red flags. I already said one with um with Emperor saying, "Oh, we're gonna figure out the secrets now. Now that you've joined me, it, like that should have mm-hmm. been a wait what moment for Anakin, but it just wasn't because he's blinded by love." Yep. Yeah. I Great like pick. I like the scene where uh, Yoda and Obi Wan go to the temple. And they are uncovering. They're finding out for the first time what has happened. Mm. They're seeing the the fall of all these younglings. And uh, for I mean, you get Yoda killing clone troopers at the start of that Super scene. Sick. Really? Oh, sick. let's add that to yeah, the list. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the duel with Yoda and the clone yeah, right. troopers. I had so many screenshots of Yoda growing up, and I I just wonder what is it. This is a sidetrack, but what is it about Yoda that makes him? The guy, because the man growing up, he was my favorite character. He's currently Marcus's, my brother's favorite character. I'm like, Marcus, what what do you like about Yoda? Why is Yoda so cool? Because I had to go back to when I was a kid. And he just went, I just like him. He's, he's a little guy. He's cool. I'm like he he is cool. Dude, I mean, you're wearing your Kermit socks. Kermit it, appears, a, appeals a to frog. kids for a reason. He literally is just a frog. Yeah. Why? Why is he? Yeah. Yeah, interesting. That was a sidetrack, but I, I love this scene where they, because it's the the start of the end. You see the fall of the temple and all these Jedi. You really start to feel how hopeless this is, and then you have Obi Wan find out that that it was Anakin, mm-hmm. and heartbreaking the the way he he his soul just sinks and the years he's poured into that boy, the years twenty plus years, yeah. Almost. I mean, not really. It's more like so. Anakin 13, is nine when he starts to train him. He's thirteen and a half. Now. Yeah, yep. yeah. So thirteen ish years, just just gone. Like, yeah, that hurts, and that leads into Ben's favorite scene. So I'll I'll take that because I I love the reign of the empire and I love the dark times and once Jedi's become rare, that's yeah. when I I think it's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's a lot of. Cool expanded lore with that though. Um, I do before we get into our scores in the end, I do want I, I have to highlight John Williams here because in my opinion, this is his best score, not only for Star Wars, but ever. And it's also the most non Star Wars score we have in there. There's those mm-hmm. returning themes, but they don't really come until the very end of the film. But a lot of it, like there's a a ton of new themes for this more than the other films you have the Padme's rumination theme which is completely like haunting mm-hmm. the battle of the heroes which is on par with duel of the fates as far as like dual music goes it is fantastic the order 66 music that plays as they march up to the jedi temple which is that such a, a cool such a cool visual it's on the back of the 4k blu-ray box yeah Anakin's Dark Deeds, which also is like super haunting. Anakin's Betrayal, that's another huge theme. Grievous's theme, which like they only oh, play so once or good. twice, but it's so hard. Like it's so yeah. hard. And then the beginning battle over Coruscant theme, dun dun. And it's kind of a mesh with the Star Wars main theme. Like it's it's genuinely there's not one piece of bad music in here. And you also have a across the stars sprinkled in throughout those scenes man and it oh man is it good got Guys, some of those ot themes i think we all yeah. whiffed it with favorite scene because when hayden christensen wakes up and you see his abs <laughs> oh man guys we whiffed it i did uh i did get chills again when they when they did the binary sunset <laughs> oh yeah, yeah yeah at the end yeah yeah when he woke up and he's <gasps> he my dad Ooh. my dad said he read somewhere that steven spielberg cried when he saw that scene can any of you back that up yeah i was there i've never heard that no no, no. <laughs> I've, never, I've never heard that I, I yeah i don't know where he read that interesting we might have to look that up Well, Micah you know gives us the rundown. You know who did cry? George Lucas when he saw the domestic opening numbers for this movie. Whoa. The budget was $113 million, $2 million lower than the other prequel movies for some reason. The domestic opening was larger than any other Star Wars movie before this uh, at $108 million domestic opening weekend. Dude, people were hyped for Crazy. this, Crazy. Yeah. Also, I want to add there were more special effects shots than in the first two Star Wars or, and then any of the other Star Wars movies combined wow combined a new hope had some 200 200 special effects Phantom Menace had you know uh, Attack of the Clones and Phantom Menace had around half of what Revenge of the Sith had combined wow 20,000 special effects shots I don't know how that works out but uh sure box office hit 868 million dollars putting it in second place so far 
seven and a half, uh, seven point six times the profit of the uh, the budget. There, pretty crazy. I mean, you can tell like th- this is him going out with a bang. And, yeah. Like everyone's working at their best. It it's also the best looking Star Wars prequel for sure. Definitely, it feels like Star Wars Endgame. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes. And uh, what awards did it get? Nothing. Not a zilch. <laughs> <laughs> what award nomination would you think this would have gotten? Special effects. Special uh, effects, you know, score maybe. Score for sure. Uh, maybe even direction or screen screenplay, something like that, you know. It, it was nominated for best makeup. Okay. Hmm. All right. Dude, yeah, that's yeah. Tion Medin right there. <laughs> that that's our that's our boy from Mad Max. Right there, for sure, with the makeup. Gyro, gyro. Gyro captain. Gyro Gyro captain. Gyro Gyro captain. (laughs) And uh, Mad Max. Well, I mean, Palpatine's makeup was pretty good, too. It was, too. Grammy nominated for Best Instrumental Composition Written for a Motion Picture, Television, or Other Visual Media. uh, And Best Instrumental Composition for Anakin's Betrayal. Anakin's Betrayal is so good. Other than that, that's it. So three nominations total. Uh, out of our main categories, sure it's gotten awards, sure it's you know, but these are the main ones that we're going to be looking at. So it's wild, man. Yeah, that's uh, it's our longest one yet. At, no, 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 second longest. Uh, Attack of the Clones was two hours twenty two. This was two hours twenty. Whew. That's right, man. You felt it <sighs> with sure. Attack. <laughs> sure. I was going to say, clarify Attack here. <laughs> yeah. Um, what about scores? Scores online. Yeah. Rotten Tomatoes critic puts this in fourth place. At 79%, 79 still. Uh, oh, Rotten Tomatoes, look at the audience score. Yeah, Rotten Tomatoes user, 66%. Order, 66. I'm crazy. Su- I'm surprised oh. it's that low, though. That's that's strange. That is low. Yeah. Huh. I, I feel like everyone is like, oh, yeah, prequels suck, but Revenge of the Sith was good. Yeah. Well, like, that's yeah. that's like usually the sentiment. As the Especially for people our age, you ask anyone our age, this one always floats to the top. Mm-hmm. Like. That's that's my favorite. Either easy. that or Phantom Menace. Those are the ones I hear. Never Attack of the Clones, which for some reason, even though it's rated a little higher, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Metacritic is sixty eight percent. Metacritic user eighty percent. So that's that's not bad. Letterbox score is a seventy four percent out of five. I don't know what that is. It's like uh, three and a half, right? Something like that. Oh, like yeah, yeah. Four. Um, IMDb is a 7.6 out of 10, averaging it out to a 74%. Hollywood Reporter gave it eighth place. They Ooh. put the uh, the prequel trilogy down Ooh. at the bottom, saying that yeah, right. the third yeah, one was the even, best. Yeah, but even that one, though? That, uh, yeah. Hollywood Reporter, know. guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. And my uh, Micah Hett, Last Jedi. So right after Last Jedi, I made a quick ranking. I posted on Snapchat. <laughs> I saw that story, memory, whatever, came back. That's awesome. Like, All right. Revenge of the Sith, number one. Awesome. So you, even you back then. Yes, the day, even back then, this, yeah. it was my favorite. I recognized genius. <laughs> okay. In your adolescence. And that's why were... I put Last Jedi second place. Yes. You know I was say, what you can't really <laughs> say that. Micah knows what genius direction is, guys. Wow. Ryan Johnson, man. Oh, so Let's good. Let's go. Hey, the... Those will be fun movies to I, talk I gen- genuinely They are going to be fun to yeah. talk about. I, I can't wait to rewatch them. Yeah. But, uh... Because those are our next mainline Star Wars movies. Mm-hmm. Um, but but no one cares about what Micah thought yeah. when he was in high school or what the internet thinks. Right? They care, we are the internet. They I care about the internet. <laughs> they care about what the three random Joe schmoes think who happen to be talking Ethan, on the you're internet. You're kicking us off. Is that what you're saying? I'm kicking you off. <sighs> you're kicking Dang. you off. With score, He's I, two random I will Joes. happily kick us off with score, guys. All right. Okay. All right. Go ahead. There. I really liked this movie, guys. Mm. I really did. It. Uh, I knew going into it, this would be the best of the prequel trilogy. I was mentally prepared for how high you guys were going to go with it because I know you both have really fond feelings toward this. And watching this again, I really, really enjoyed this. This is probably the most I've ever enjoyed this movie. On this watch, in this context, in the context of the original trilogy, in the context of the prequel trilogy, I think it really just is a nice bow on mm. what these movies are. And it this the first two didn't really do this for me, but this one did what a good prequel should do, is it made what comes in the originals better. Yep. Because 
it establishes the threat of the Empire. It establishes who Sheev Palpatine is. It establishes who Anakin is. But it How establishes Luke and Leia get to the place. Yeah, it too. establishes a new hope. Mm-hmm. Right? Palpatine thought of everything. He orchestrated everything. The clones, the the fall of Anakin, the the you know what, the rise of the Empire. He was behind all of it. But Luke is there. Luke emerges and Luke is a new yes. hope. And I love how this movie sets it up. I love how it sets up the dark times. And there's even so much story that is left out of this. And I think that is really cool. And the emotional scenes really sat with me a lot more. And just the scene, the quiet scenes between Obi-Wan and Anakin, like when they're talking about the ranking of master and Obi-Wan's like, it, it just takes patience and time. It will come. I really like the the setting the stage for that and uh I I want to go high with this but I don't think it quite it doesn't quite hit what I love about the first 3. I lo- love the way Micah put it. This is the most Star Wars Star Wars have ever Star Wars. You know, it <laughs> it is in my words. In Micah's words. <laughs> yeah. So, I I I really do like this movie. I would say this movie's good. I might even call this movie great but i also call the original trilogy great in its entirety but i think this complements th- this complements the orig- original trilogy really really well so i gave my Empire. lowest or, score uh, for the original trilogy was 9.4 oh really yep. that's high Man, I wanted to match this with that, but I don't know if I can go 9.4 with this. I want to go 9.2 with this. I really like this movie. I know it's wow. higher. It's higher than you guys were anticipating it, but to me it doesn't capture the magic, the feel of like yeah, there's so much to this. There's so much in this movie, but I think that is a positive but it's also negative too because we could have talked for five more hours about this specific movie. And that that's good. You want movies to be a lot, but also I like a more condensed story. And I think that the original trilogy captures that the magic of the original trilogy and the characters. I think regardless of what you think of the cast in this movie? It never captures that fun hokiness that the cast captures in the originals. But agreed. I think this movie is really good and I'm never going to bash anyone for saying that this one is their favorite mm. because there are so many great elements in it. You're just scared that Ben's going to beat you to death. If you say it's the worst <laughs> no, one, it's not, <laughs> no, it's not the worst one. <laughs> no, that just was for me. It doesn't, it doesn't, you know, I mean, 9.2, come on. Yeah, I like, really good. I like this movie a yeah. ton. Yeah. Yeah. That's almost as high as your battle for Endor score. Yeah. <laughs> what did I get battle for Endor? Three. <laughs> Wow, a nine point two, Ethan. I know you guys. Thought, you thought I would drag it down, but I, I can't. I can't. I like this movie. Well, I. It's just. It's good. This movie, because it exists in twenty twenty four as a capper to not only the prequel trilogy but also the Clone Wars novels, if you've read them, comics, if you've read them, shows, other shows, like. I mean, ages like wine. It it ages like fine wine, and now like because of that, like. There is a reason you see this on at the top of so many people's list because when you factor all of that in, when you know all of that going in, it I just it makes this movie It's the most dense, dense Star it Wars is, movie. Yes, yeah. I, I agree. You want to go on your score with that? Uh I yeah, I will go because I'm keep obvious. Going, yeah, man. I will go because I'm obvious because it's a ten for me for sure, without a doubt. <laughs> this is the best one for me. And it's because of that. It's because the Clone Wars, in my opinion, is my favorite piece of Star Wars. Ever. Favorite piece of media ever? Would you go that far <laughs> with Clone Wars? I, I might even go that far because it means so much to me, because there are so many lessons you can take with it, because there are so many different plots and different characters, and I think that they meld it all together. But this works so well as a capper to my favorite show. It's one of it's my second favorite movie of all time. First switch being Fellowship of the Ring. Okay. He's, I, a, he's a fandom guy. I I well, Last Samurai is up there too, right? Last Samurai is my third favorite. Okay, so that that is not in there. And but this, I, I'm telling you guys, that what 
what is so fascinating to me about this and what makes me keep what makes me keep coming back is the emotion that this movie has and has an I, I would say even more than Return of the Jedi, even though that is emotional, this is more emotional for me just because I want to watch this movie one day and see Anakin not turn. See him make mm. the choice to not go to the dark side. Gets you every time. Do the right thing. And when, each time I watch this movie, man, I almost feel myself, <laughs> oh my gosh, if you would just Maybe not he won't. Go, maybe he maybe won't. He won't. There maybe is that won't like, be. don't, don't go to the dark side, Anakin. Please, everything's gonna work out. Obi Obi Wan's gonna be the uncle to your kids. Everything's <laughs> gonna be fine. Like yeah. there is that if you would just not. But but then again, it's like you understand where he's coming from because you have to make that choice of this is your wife. You just saw your mom die three years ago in your arms. I wasn't strong enough to save you, mom. I promise I won't fail again. Is what he says. I'll see. In Attack of the Clones. And, I, dude, I'm getting emotional talking about it. Don't cry, man. Dude. I, yes, it's cool. <laughs> but it's it's that. It has such a hold on me, this film, that every time I sit and watch it, I, I, I even said, because we started it late at, at eight, 8 o'clock, and I was like, man, I don't know if I'm ready to experience the emotion that I always do when it comes to this movie. You said it. You asked me for my bachelor party. You're like, if it, well, you didn't. I, I disguised subtly it. Yeah. Disguised. It's like, hey, guys, random question. If you were yes. to watch any movie in theater for the first time, what would it be? You said Revenge. That's and sick. I'm like, all right, I'm renting if out a theater. If there's any movie that. I could, and yeah. that was, I mean, this is it, man. That was so a beautiful time. It, it was. It was a It was a great time. And so. <laughs> you could have invited to me. me. Even though I wasn't on your party, I could have gone. <laughs> Michael, we didn't know you then, okay? <laughs> we knew you, but. Believe me, it would be different now, Micah. <laughs> All right. Okay. But at the but at the end of the day, th- this this is the original trilogy's up there. My my scores are nine, nine point five, and nine for the original trilogy. But this, to me, it's 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 the a clear Star ten Wars, out of ten. Star Wars, mm-hmm. Star Wars. Yeah, I I I love this okay. movie so much, guys. Right. I I was ready for it. Attack last week threw me off because we were way too high. This one I I knew where you guys were swinging from. So, well, I I, I really mentally yeah. ready. So, Micah, you never gave on the Marvel movie marathon. You never gave a ten out of ten. Is that correct? That's correct. My highest score uh, is Logan at a nine point seven, and then uh, yeah, even uh, even with the New Hope, I, I matched it with a nine point seven. This, this isn't me like setting him up for that. I genuinely don't know what your score see. is going to yeah. be. Yeah, I mm-hmm. I just wanted clarify that because you've never given a 10 out of 10 so to pass uh to to like get up into the the tens range it has to be an all-time great like an an all-time greatest movie ever yeah interstellar for me is one that i will point to every single day and i'll be like that is a 10 out of 10 movie that is a movie i will see every single time it is in theaters i mean like it's in theaters quite a bit so it's up for debate but yeah yeah for me, that is exactly what I was looking for. That is exactly what I needed in a in a science fiction movie, and for Revenge of the Sith, that is exactly what I want out of a Star Wars movie. It, it hits every single beat that I need it to. It does every single thing with lightsabers, with the Force. We didn't even talk about the super sick Force abilities that they do with the the two Force pushes going at the same oh, time. Yeah, dude. Such a you, sick sp- it, it scratches itches you didn't Yoda even know you had. Yoda absorbs Palpatine's, you know, lightning and yeah, you guys make up. Oh, it is force burst. so good. The implications that it has on it. Oh, no. What, what fell? What fell? Anyway, <laughs> it, it has such huge implications on extended universe. It has is such a contained story as well. It holds up on its own. I love every single aspect about this movie. Thinking back, I couldn't think of it a, a single thing. Except for the little, you know, my own thing saying, oh, you know, he's, he's laughing during that one line. That's that's not the movie's fault. That's something else. Um, I love the duels. I love the score. I love the action. I love every single thing about this movie. And for that, I'm giving this podcast its first. No freaking way. <laughs> Nine point. No, I'm just <laughs> no. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Wow. This is one of my 10 out of 10 movies. Uh, it is it is a movie I can't... Once I get into the 10s, I cannot rank those. I couldn't put Interstellar over Revenge of the Sith. It depends on the day. That's what I reserve 10s out of 10s for. 
I can't think of a movie that tops it. I just can't. There, it. This is my child. I can't pick a favorite kid. This, I, I, you know, you were my brother. You, Revenge of the Sith is my brother. Yeah. So, uh, with that in light, I'm going to change my score to a seven. <laughs> Shut up. To bring down. Revenge uh, of the Sith is just such a special movie. It, uh, I it don't. Is. I, I can't foresee a movie coming close to uh, Revenge of the Sith. I mean, like, there's Dune 1 and 2, but... Uh, not like, even close. Like, when you, when not you, even close. Uh, absolutely. Like, those are, those are so... It's a different beast. I can't yes. put Dune 2 over it. It's on a similar level for me. Would and, you give Dune 2 a 10 out of 10? It'd be close. I've only seen it once. We gotta, we gotta talk about. I've it. only yeah. seen it once. You've seen it how many times? Now? Three times. Three. I, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, I, I hope that movie. Whatever Real open, quick, what would you put it? Nine point five. Nine point five. Whatever. Open letterboxed. I'm like, wait, Ben watched, ben watched this again. When did he watch Dune two again? again? I'm telling you, there. We'll talk about it. Dune after this two podcast, is, actually. you know, yeah. Dune is one of those movies where, you know, it, it's amazing. Uh, I, it just. It has to stand the test of time for me. And That's the Interstellar, thing. it's been ten years. This is the ten year anniversary, and it's still there are no that good for there me. are no lightsabers in Dune. <laughs> well, there are no and lightsabers the, in Dune. You talk about films like I. That's why I find it so hard to give a movie a ten out of ten right as I see it in theaters, yeah. and even like five, six. Yeah. Like you're like yeah. it's a, so hard because a ten it has, has to, to stand, mean yeah. so much for me. That's what I'm and saying. Yep. Even Logan, I'm not quite there yet. Yep. Even A New Hope, I'm not quite there yet. Just because I haven't... For for A New Hope, it's a movie that I recognize as being very great, but it doesn't hold that special place in my heart. It's the magic, but it's not scratching the itches that I needed to scratch. Revenge of the Sith is everything. And Revenge of the Sith is so, so good. We didn't talk about it the whole podcast, but every other scene... There's a meme that you can pull from this. <laughs> and movie. the more the memes, memes, it either means it's a bad movie or people love it. And either way, it's it's beloved. If people know this movie and this this holds up super duper well, it I does. think. And why people give it such bad scores is beyond me. I tried reading some but reviews this, online. I couldn't. I couldn't. It. I mean, it is. It is a, a factor of the prequels. And I. If you didn't I really like the other think, prequels at all, but, I can see why you wouldn't have liked it. But here's the thing: I really, I really, really do think that the Clone Wars and expanded universe, like they enhance it so, so. I think much. it enhances an already ten out of ten movie for me, though. I like for me, it just it just solidifies it as a ten out of ten for me. I'm there because my favorite thing is about this movie is Anakin and Padme, which. Kind of takes a back seat in the Clone Wars, mm. but that is on. It's like that's what the prequel trilogy is all about. It's it's them yeah. two an Obi Wan story, but all that comes to a head here. And it's it's it genuinely it's just Star Wars. At the end of the day, it's there are some happy moments, like the end of Return of the Jedi. That's a that's a happy moment. But I would say it's more bittersweet than anything else. Star Wars is sad mm-hmm. when you look at all the characters and the their Shakespearean endings. Drama. Yeah, their endings like. All the major characters and how they end off. It's it's truly sad. And Han, Leia, Luke, Anakin. <laughs> See, well, that's, that's sad for a different Yoda. reason. Yoda gets kind of a good ending. He just kind of like goes to he bed. He passes on. In the, it's yeah. true. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> if you're going to go out, that's the way there to do is. it. Obi-Wan has a really good... He goes out probably the On his best. own terms. Yeah, he's yeah. like, he's yeah, like, you know what? No. Woo! But I like, mean, I probably should stay, train Luke a little more, but yeah. man, this fight is, I'm done. The yeah. desert sand killed me. Kill me now. We, this, the, 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 the biggest aspect of this movie ruins about a new hope is their final meeting. That duel with Obi-Wan and uh, oh, Vader yeah. is <laughs> just, your math of evil, da. Great scene, mm-hmm. but it just is like, all right, boop. All right. Yeah. That's why I like that one scene, the one, the YouTube video, man. I, it's I know it's not it. It exists in my like head canon as like that's what it is, but it's not the real one. But it's like a nice continuation. If you were to watch A New Hope after Avengers, all right, it's time, Micah. Where does this yep. fall? Uh, I all fought. Right. I fought. You did but, fight, but we won. Um, the, the ranking rules. Let's uh, let's organize this real quick by our ranking. So. Uh, last place. We're gonna skip holiday special because I haven't seen it yet. Still on my list. You gotta watch it, Mike. I know. I have know. to. 
Caravan of Courage and Ewok Adventure, 2.4. That's, uh, what, what place is that even? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, <coughs> 7, 8. All right, so we've watched eight movies so far. Ewok, uh, Ewok's Battle for Endor at uh, seventh place, 3.6 out of 10. Phantom Menace coming into the bottom. Big jump, though. Yeah, big jump, up to an 8 <laughs> out of 10. It's still a very respectable score. Uh, what is this, fifth place? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yep. Attack of the Clones at... At 8.06, just barely better than Phantom Menace. Uh, depends on who you ask. Yeah, I wasn't asking Defin- you. Definitely does. Fourth place, Return of the Jedi at a 9.06. Which, uh, Full point jump from Parker attack. will say this is his favorite. Return is peak. Yeah. I'm not going to fight you if, you, if I think that's our, your favorite I think we, one. You our can top say four, that top any, four are peak. Yeah, yep. any yep. of the top four you can say are your favorite, and people will be fine for that. I agree. Uh, a New Hope, third place at a 9.4. Second place, Empire Strikes Back mm. at a 9.6. It did it, guys. And first place, Revenge of the Sith, because of my 10 out of 10. No, no, no. All right, all right. Don't, don't <laughs> put... Even if you were to give it a 9, I still think it would be... Nope. No, no. Don't, yeah. put, no. don't put that all on you, though, Micah. No, yeah. It, guys. No, it would have been, though. <laughs> we all liked this movie, okay? Do 9.5, Micah. If I did I want, a 9.5, I want, I want to see the even. average. If... Oh, wow. 109.5. <laughs> 9.5 still would have, yeah, Empire would have been. What about 9.7 if you matched a New Hope score? If I matched my New Hope score, it would have just would barely. Have been, yeah. Okay. But peaked. Mike, had, Mike yeah, did it, give it, it a 10. That's gets right. A yeah. Full, full point, whatever. That's right. So that brings our, uh, we have two trilogies now completed. Which one is better? Uh, original trilogy averages out to a 9.35 out of 10. Uh, ben, your average was a 9.1. Mine was a 9.3. Ethan, yours was a 9.5. Our prequel trilogies averaged out to an 8.6. Ben, yours was a 9.16. That's the... Ben, what's better? Original or prequel? <laughs> Whoa! Like same. I said, like I said, right from the start, I wow. love... Did George, you plan that? George, no, I that, genuinely... How did that no work way. out like that? There's no way. You rated both trilogies the exact same decimal average. I, dude, this is I'm outrageous. you, man. <laughs> it's unfair. It's unfair. <laughs> George Lucas Star Wars, it's unparalleled. Wait, Ethan, you gave it the same score too. 7.4 <laughs> average. Oh, wow, yeah, really? Look at this guy. <laughs> uh, and then for me, it was a 9.2. So uh, yeah, second place, prequel trilogy at an 8.6. And coming in last place is our vintage trilogy... <laughs> Ooh. I haven't rated holiday special, so it's Gotta still at an average of 2.1 for the whole thing. Uh, but you guys are at an average of 1.1 for Eth- for Ben, 1.8 for Ethan. Could you do the math? What would you have to rate holiday special to get? <laughs> to what? It would have to be above a 10. Like, put in like a 100 in there. Oh, 3. man. 6. Even if I gave it a 10, it would be a 3.6 for the, <laughs> for the score for holiday special. Ethan and I are just... That movie was terrible. Dang. If that's not a movie, it's not though, yeah. the holiday special. True. Well, here Parker gave it a gave it a one, so that would bring it up to a, a point uh, six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you liking some aspects. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I my half like star is for the. I the might Boba unironically Fett. give it a like a two or a one and a half. I could see I myself could going see you up. doing like a because it's still not good, half, but you know. I it's, see merit. It's in, pretty terrible, yeah. in my opinion. But a half star would be yeah. I, I hated it. All right. So, but next week we have a movie that is reviewed quite poorly. Yep. Uh, with the Star Wars, the Clone Wars film came out August 10th, 2008. So that's what, three years after Revenge of the Sith? Uh, this was the pilot episode to the Clone Wars. Was it the show? pilot? It was the pilot. It, yeah. They they mash two Clone Wars arcs yeah. together. Yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll talk about it next. Genius week. Yeah. construction for uh, yeah. the well, average internet score is is whoa whoa whoa, whoa. save it well, save it save it. No, I, well I'm not gonna do all the score oh, okay. breakdown, right, but right. It, it's a a four point nine out of ten. Uh, so putting it not last place because we have some stinkers in there, but definitely second place if you're not including holiday special. So second to last place that is. Ouch! It it'll be very fun to watch the Clone Wars film well, again. And and but what's interesting is the Metacritic user score is really high. Cause like, see see now here's where I start to get a little worried. Not really with the Clone Wars film because I, I have a feeling I have a feeling we're going to be kind of mixed on that one. Even I recognize that there are some very poor one qualities could say with that. From this point on in the marathon, this is where the fun begins. 
Because like, because genuinely, from here on out could be like, controversial. It's, it's a wild it's, it's card. It's a little. I am just really excited and interested. Mm. And maybe, Parker revealed his like, thoughts today that he doesn't like Rogue One very much, which is interesting. I, so when that and movie came I didn't out, like Rogue One. Look, dude, look, I gave it seventh place one. When that movie came out, dude, everyone was like, "Well, you just didn't care about any of the characters." We'll talk about it, but I just, I genuinely don't know where we're all gonna. I mean, I know where I stand on the sequel trilogy. But I really don't but know. But in the context of a rewatch and, and a marathon, you know, yep. All right, we're 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 we're, we're trying to appreciate. I'm excited to watch here. Solo we are. again. My aunt has not seen Solo, and okay. she is the biggest Star Wars fan I know. She like wow. reads Clear, the books. Like you're bigger saying, Star Wars you, fan than me. Micah, yeah, you say a, that. On. She has a Star Wars tattoo. Come you, on, man. You have. She, she has. She reads books and. Listen, stuff. Micah. I if your see. argument for being the biggest Star Wars fan, it is this but like you haven't even seen all the the major films <laughs> i think you're kind of not there mm. like if you, you like star wars Stolen. yeah she she's sure. watched the clone wars and rebels and multiple times that's yeah. Uh, yeah okay all right multiple times all right all right all right that's fair what's her name katie katie i'm pretty sure she's even watched resistance which oh. that would put it now that even i haven't ventured into <laughs> katie we need to talk all right I guess if you're not gonna watch one of these, it might you might want it to be solo. I would. You just would watch the main. I would say three. Clone Wars film would be the one I would drop. Well, but we'll see. Well, okay. yeah. <laughs> just because there's whoa, so much whoa, other Clone. Okay, no, hold on though. There's other Clone Wars stuff to watch. There is, but there's no other Han. It's, background. I will say this. Well, I have, dude. It's been a while since I've seen that one, but <laughs> the Clone Wars movie is is not all bad. I will say that. Not like quality aside, it's just that there's more Clone Wars. Yes. There's a whole that's show. That's true. That's yeah, why that's I would true. drop it. Okay. But yes, stay tuned for that next Keeping week. Keeping out uh, the Ewok and Holiday Special, of course. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited for a we are more shorter than halfway through. Star Wars as, film. As long as being emotionally connected, <laughs> yes. like the drop off is significant <laughs> for just... what is coming up because. Yes. There, there are a few hills that, yeah, we might like some of these movies, but it's not. There's so much history mm-hmm. with these first six yeah. that I, like, it's going to be, once I edit this down, this is going to be close to the runtime of the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, I don't know if we'll go on for that long about the Clone Wars. We film. might, we, uh, <laughs> we might need <laughs> a shorter, need a shorter week. one. Because we, so. we did shorter episodes for Ewoks, too, so. All right, Master. Go to Asian World Short. Thank you for listening, guys. Yes. Thank you in this incredibly long Revenge of the Sith discussion, but one that I have g- greatly enjoyed the discussion. This, this has been yeah, excellent, Yeah, let us know gentlemen. what your thoughts are on the, yes. on the prequels, because I'm interested to, to hear what our, our regular listeners are. Uh, you guys know who you are. I'd love to hear what your, what your ranking is so far. Of the origi- especially of the original six, because I, I know you guys have all seen the original six, and some of you have even seen the Ewok films, which I applaud your effort for, but I'd love to know where the original George Lucas six Star Wars films rank uh, for you guys, too, because that, that would be that'd mm. be interesting. And let us know what you want us to watch next, because we're getting close to the... That's true. We're getting close. That's we're true. almost done with this. We've got... We are probably going to break for the summer, do some we usually do things that. a little I'll different. I'll probably get married or something. Mike, Mike was... <laughs> Hopefully, nice. Micah will get married. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, dude. But I'm yeah, for that. D- expect something different this summer. But yeah, we, we want it. we're looking for our next marathon. Let us know. It's gonna be. It's gonna be very. It, interesting. it feels like after doing Marvel and Star Wars, everything else will be a a breeze. A breeze. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's very true. I I know that this podcast, this one specifically, has been a breeze for us. I love. I will say, just I just the part of the selfish part of me loves that this is the best average ranked on for it. it like it's on the top of many people's lists. It's on the top of our list. Revenge of I'm the Sith. I'm glad it is number one on our list because it's not a lot yes. of people put this number one for some reason. But. You see that more and more. You now, see though. where it's it, it's like oh, but you can't beat the o, oh the OT. And, and it, I mean, that's you can't a valid bash the OT. Like it's so good. Like our average scores for the OT are lower. They're, they're or higher than the prequel trilogy. Mm-hmm. But I'm very interested to see where it comes. So. Stay tuned for all those podcasts down the road. I believe we have six Star Wars films left to review. Micah has seven because he has to watch the holiday special. <laughs> so t- stay tuned for all Guys, of that. Guys, pray for Micah. Yes. He needs that. Prayers for Mr. <laughs> Pat. <laughs> Otherwise, this is Ben Rayside. This is Ethan. I am the Senate.
And remember, the Force will be with you. <laughs>